It's going to be a great night. Oh, we're looking forward to tonight. Of course, this is the first time that Pitts has ever been in uh, Miani as well. So we're really excited to see what we can bring to the crowd. And, um, of course, to those who are streaming with us at home. Yeah, it's going to be an awesome night, Booker. We've got 11 strong teams here. Oh, mate, I'm excited. Eh? As we saw on Wednesday, we're excited as these teams come in and the support that's come from all the clubs for this event is just amazing. Absolutely amazing. And the weather's going to hold off and we're going to have an absolutely fantastic night's racing. It's going to uh, really, it just does show the esteem that Peter Barry was held in. Um, sadly, we lost him in 2009. He loved his team's racing, and this event has just grown in stature. It sure has, and it's a real honour to him as well to see everyone who uh, comes back year after year. We do rely on the weather, of course, but the weather's been a bit dodgy, but everybody's still stu uh, turned up. So it's a great testament to, of course, Peter Barry and the Miani track as well. Um, we know we've been here before this year, and we know how hard you work to keep a, a meeting on on track so I mean it, it's great that everybody's turned up from far as well we've, we've got uh, the Orange Rapids from all the way from down south so that was a big haul up the island from them. What about the two Raiders teams how good is it that one region will bring two teams? Yeah and it's really um, it's really interesting considering they've just pulled out of Auckland teams as well so it just goes to show the strength of the class up in the Waikato area as well it's great it's great to see. I know there's a lot of talk about trying to grow this event even more and make mm. it a lot more prestigious Booker and you guys are, are involved you love your teams racing um, 11 good teams forget about the Hawks Bay who do you think's the outside bet? Oh mate it, it's really hard it's like I said the other night you know like it, it, Everybody that turns up here is, is all class, and, and any of them can win it, and it's really hard to pick. Um, obviously, you've got the favourites, I think, was probably Rotorua because they're in good form, but, I mean, I, I mean that that um, that Bay team, the Bulldogs, they've shown some real real nous at the Auckland teams, and, and they're only growing stronger, so, I mean, they could be the dark horse that puts a few people away, mate, to be honest. You, you know that's not the real Bay, though. This is the real Bay <laughs> yeah. here, right? I was waiting let's, for that from you, let's Mike. Let's just clarify that, OK? <laughs> Uh, look, we've got five previous winners here. That's how strong this event is. Let's yeah. have a look at some of that history. Puma's sadly not here, but they yeah. made three finals. I've won it twice. Yeah, uh, and there's a good reason why they're not here too. They do have the Manawatu Champs racing this weekend. However, the weather's not looking too flash for them either. So I know that we won't be taking a late entry, but we might be able to get a few more uh, cheers on the crowd here. But it is sad to see them not here because that would have been a great competition to, uh, for them to be here. But they've won this previously twice. So, uh, yeah, sadly missed this weekend. Yeah, three finals for the Pumas and the Vulcans who we have here mm. tonight as well. They've reached three finals. They've won it once. And you've got to look at the Stormers. Three times the bridesmaid, never the bride. <laughs> yeah, they could be due too, mate. You know, like, it, it, those stats you talk about, and it, everybody's come close, eh? Hey? And the Wanganui has been very strong over the years, haven't they? And, and the Stormers, like you say, bridesmaids. I mean, it's just, uh, it's so hard to pick, mate. I just, I don't want to be the one that says it's going to be this one and then everyone's going to give me grief, you know? So, um, I mean, at the end of the day, whoever wins it, to be the best, you've got to beat the best and they deserve that top step. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how it all plays out, to be honest, Mike, yeah. I think we're all looking forward yeah. to that, Booker. Yeah, mate, 100%. I'm, I'm just so excited about it. I'm so, I really am chomping a bit. I've been, I was up at 5 o'clock this morning waiting for it to start, you know? So <laughs> it's it's all about the fun. And, and these guys, you, I walked around talking to some of the drivers before, and they're all just pumped. They're ready to go, and it's it's, it's it's good to see. They're all loving it and smiles on their faces, and, and that makes it all worth it as well, mate. There's one guy that stands out from mm. everybody else, Bianca, and that's Callum Flavel. He's won this twice with the Rascals. He's actually a defending champion, won it with the Kings two years ago. Sure, uh, Cycling Gabriel mucked everything up for us last year. Yep. He's back again, could make it four. He very well could make it four. He's in a really strong team. Um, and just moving back to what you were saying too, the strength of the team, it's really good to see a mix. We've got a lot of the younger, newer drivers coming through and putting their hands up for teams racing, which is really good. Of course, it's a nice entry into um, some of these titles that we have later on next year, well, this year, next season. Um, but how exciting to, to actually have that blend of the newer drivers, the, I don't want to say least experienced, um, mixed in with the more experienced drivers. And a good um, a good show of that is the Auckland team being led by Blake Brooks and Vasey as well. They're, they're really, really good leaders and they've got a really good, um, a really good vibe going on in the Auckland team. So I'm sorry, guys, but they might be my pick. I know that Ooh. my home team's sitting right, over here. Okay. But I'm okay. going for Auckland. Well, I've got to sit on the fence with the Ruffies or the Maulers, you know. I've got to do that. Um, as I say, the real bay. Well, I can't disagree with you there. We'd, we'd love to see a Maulers and Ruffies final. Oh, mate, I mean, for us, that'd be the ultimate, wouldn't it? But, like, 
to have the, I think if the Ruffies make the final, it's going to be the most popular team. You, you, people, there won't be a person in the house is not happy to see that because they are representing Peter and his colours, and that would be something special. I just words couldn't, couldn't can't explain, mate, how, how special that would be. I think the emotion in the club rooms would be top level. Oh, mate, it, it, yeah, it, it would be out the gate. Seriously, it just. Yeah, I like I said. I, I, at the moment, I can't get words out. Just thinking about that that possibility, you know, and um, and and like being said, these young guys and girls that are coming through now, it's so good to see, you know. If we don't breed them in now, when do we, you know? Mm. So it's great to see them, and they and they and they're proud as to make some of them their debuts, being the Peter Berry teams. I think we're really seeing the fruits of the labour of the mini stock class from starting 25 yeah, years ago. Now absolutely. we're right in that period where these drivers are coming into their own. Yeah, and, and it shows in all classes, not just the stock cars and the super stocks, but the open wheelers through the country as well. And I think that Speedway New Zealand is a really, really exciting time, um, to, uh, you know, to be a part of right now because that gre- that growth and that strength is just. Uh, twofold every year you know it just gets stronger and stronger and then we have our more senior drivers who are not aging out they're actually really happy to be mentors to these new, newer drivers you wouldn't have got <laughs> sorry what they'll just <laughs> the, ex- that the part. essential part of a speedway <laughs> yeah. meeting the, the portable barbecue. barbecue yeah yeah and it's really nice to see um you know these older more senior drivers um being mentors to, uh, across the board, and they're really fully involved in that stock. Cl- uh, and sorry, in the mini stock class as well. So, Speedway New Zealand, it's a great sport. It's only getting better and better at the minute. Oh, yep, ab- absolutely, it is. Mm. Uh, the Ambo's just coming in, so uh, just walking? trying to think which way they're going to head. I think they'll probably switch around in behind Stiffy over there on the camera. Essential part of having a Speedway meeting, isn't it? And a lot of meetings now. Um, dictated to with start and finish times by the Ambos. Mm. Well, that's right, mate. We had it out here the other week, didn't we? We I mean, that taxi stop. But they do a great job. I mean, the, to support St John's is, is just as important as, support, as supporting Speedway, you know? Like, they had that meeting over at Hastings every day supporting St John's with the car show. And, and I mean, my granddaughter, she's trained to be St John's, and it just makes me very proud. And so... Like you say, you can't do it without them. And to, if you're out there, support St John's because they, they, we need them. We need them on the road. So, yeah. And also, we're raising money for Napier Riding for the Disabled here this weekend. Um, we have the shirt that we traditionally auction off with all of the winning team and managers signing that. We showed that on your show the other night. Uh, I'm just wearing a tribute shirt up in the box for the weekend. Uh, so it's about raising money for them and keeping the memory of Peter going. Absolutely, mate. And of course, Murray from League of Speed Media donated that. He's done an amazing drawing as well to go with that. So, and, and raising money for the Riding for the Disabled. I mean, they support it out the club here all the time. And it's a great charity, Mike. And that shirt, mate, Ken's already put a bid in. So, you know, we're, we're ready to go. Yeah, we're going to hold him to that 100. Are you going to bid for that shirt as well? Well, I've seen the shirt, but I don't think uh, orange is my colour, to be fair. But I will <laughs> try and raise some money for charity, absolutely. Um, just for everyone who is watching at home on the stream who may have not have seen it yet, Mike, where can we actually catch a glimpse of this shirt? Yeah, it's getting noisy down here, Bianca. Uh, catch a glimpse of that shirt. It's actually sitting, uh, it's pinned up in behind the office at the moment. Yep. So anyone coming around uh, through the pit area can have a look in the office here and they'll see it. Okay. And also, if you go onto my Facebook page, Mike Wilson, uh, there's a front and back print of that on there. Perfect. So is that your Facebook page or website, Mike? Just my Facebook page. There you go, everybody. Seems to be where everybody goes these days and yeah. has a look on Facebook. Look, you can hear the motors warming up in the background now. Teams are starting to heat up these race cars. We're going to have a grand parade around about five o'clock tonight so we're not far away the sun's beating down in the background there which is great to see it's a little bit windy the track is looking really fast we're ready to go booker oh yeah mate i walked out there before and the track's looking spectacular the team's done a fantastic job the committee here's done a fantastic job the, with the motors roaring i'm ready to go mate i'm so pumped i can see bianca's ready to go we're just we're chomping the bit for this it's gonna be a spectacular event fantastic Hard and fast racetrack here tonight, Bianca. We're going to see some great racing. I mean, Miani never lets us down. I've got to say, it is a very, very fast track at the best of times. But uh, with teams racing on there, I mean, I would ex- expect some speed. And I really do expect a lot of crashing as well. Uh, a lot of damage, I would expect, only because for a lot of these drivers, this is the last meeting of their season. Yeah, well, it definitely will. And uh, if they wreck some machinery, maybe it will definitely be their last meeting of the season. Yeah. Uh, we just have to let the ACM metal supply cartage truck in. You can see they're getting ready. The orange ruffies are making their way out now. We're not too far away. We're going to go racing thanks to the Napier City Council. It is the Peter Barry Memorial Stock Car Teams. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Miani Speedway for the Napier City Council 
2024 Peter Barry Stock Car Memorial Teams. Hey, g'day, we're here down here. Let's try and grab one of these roughies off the cars and have a quick word to them. Come jump over here and have a word to us, mate, before you head round. Hey, uh, how exciting is this, mate? How excited are you right now? Oh, yeah, first time out here, so see how it goes. Mate, you're representing the, the underdog team, the Peter Barry team. You must be pretty proud to be doing that. Yeah, yeah, it's good to be out there representing uh, and just getting out there teams racing, eh? Have some fun. That's it, mate. Go join your team. Enjoy. Have some fun, eh? We'll go over to... Oh. Sorry, guys. We're just going to grab... Uh, we were going to grab Cody Lockett, but he's got the most important job of uh, handing out all the lollies to the crowd. So we might grab him later on in the pits. But here's another young guy we can talk to, Caelan Mooney. Hey, mate. How are you doing? Welcome to the Bay. Yeah, thank you. It's good to be here. Hey, uh, tell us. How good is it to be here, not only representing your team, but uh, being part of such a, a great memorial... Hey, how are you doing? Great memorial for uh, Peter Barry. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. You know, it's um, obviously a one we all want to win, you know, and put on a show for also Peter Barry, but for our club. So, yeah, we're looking forward to it. Now, you and I have had lots of chats through the year because you've been a great uh, a great ambassador of this hey, chicken flag and the podium. But introduce us to your team very quickly. Uh, tell us who we can keep an eye out for this weekend. Uh, well, yeah, it's the team obviously Cody Lockett, uh, Callum Sturzaker, Larry Smith, myself, um, Big Ra, and um, who else we got? Oh, and Bailey Chapo, Bailey Chapman. Who's uh, running the place of captain this weekend? Oh, we don't really have a captain, it's just kind of whoever gets picked on the spot. <laughs> Who's Johnny on the spot, eh? Hey, listen, you go and have a uh, catch up to your car. They've left you well and truly, but good luck for the weekend. Let's hope we can get you on that podium. Yeah, we'll give it a good go, thank you. Awesome, cheers. I think Booker's got someone behind him. No, he's I'm, trying I'm to pull trying somebody to, off I'm going to grab someone off this, uh, one of these Stratford boys. See if this man, you want to come over and talk to us, bro? Hey, uh... This is pretty good stuff, mate. The weather's held off. The track's looking fantastic. You made the trip down today. Stratford's looking strong. How's the excitement? Oh, I'm pretty excited. Myself, it's been a few years since uh, doing some teams racing, but the team's looking good. Um, should be a good night. Mate, uh, all the streams look, teams look strong. Who have you got first up? Uh, Gisborne in the first race, and then the Vulcans in the second. Oh, mate, that's awesome. Hey, look, I wish you all the best. Good luck, and uh, have fun. Thank you, mate. Cheers. Look, uh, we've got, we got the cowbells going here, Bianca. Yeah, we have. You can't miss a, uh, this team, this Waikato team when they come out. Eh? Look at the smiles on the face. I know that Amarin can uh, get a close-up on them. They're absolutely stoked to be here. Look at all of this. How oh, this... You. You. Come down here and have a chat with us. How are you doing? Introduce yourself. I've never spoken to you before. Hello. Oh, yeah. How are we going? Uh, good, good. Tell us your name. Uh, William Watt. William White, is this obviously your first, you're racing in the team, right? You look like this is your first team's race. No, no, probably like 10th or 11th team race. You're joking. Tell me, how old are you? You look way too young to be doing this. As a mum of someone who races Speedway, I think I'm probably just as nervous as what I would be if it was my son out here. Oh, I'm just about to turn 21. 21, oh, well, there you go. I was well wrong. I was thinking you're a bit younger than that. But tell us, what's it, what's it like to be part of such an awesome team, such an awesome environment? You guys have got not one but two teams here this weekend. Oh, it's bloody awesome, mate. Eh? The atmosphere is cool and all the boys are psyched, and it's pretty cool to have two teams show up and two strong teams. And I see Brad Philpot is driving one of the cars as well. So he's here not driving, not part of the teams racing as such, but he's definitely here and it is a mentor or a help position. Yeah, he's always there to support us, which is quite cool, eh? You couldn't ask for a better person to mentor you guys as a team's racer, right? Yeah, yeah, no, it's pretty cool. Hey, listen, your uh, team's well and truly left you. I'm going to let you go, but tell us again your name. Uh, William. William, I think you're one of the uh, boys that we might have to keep a close eye on this weekend, William. Good luck for the weekend. Uh, sweet, cheers for that. Awesome, cool, thanks. Another one and of those young come. mini stock oh, look kids at there, Dion Bianca. Henderson. He never, ever fails to uh, disappoint. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> look at him up there. Hey, have you got some lollies for us, Dion? <laughs> Oh, sorry, Mike, what was that? Yeah, just referring to just yet another one of those young mini stock kids, Bianca, but he still looks like he should be driving them. I know, I was quite surprised when he, he told me his age. I thought he looked about 16 or 17. Here we go. Here's a Rotorua team, of course, uh, Tony. Tony's super excited. Hey, mate, what another fantastic event. You're, you're the one NZ guys at the moment, mate. Your team must be pretty excited. Yeah, well, it's the first showing we've got now as one NZ, as the you know, two new teams champions, and um, we've got a couple of guys that are defending champions, including myself on the team. So no, we look really. Looking forward to it. This is a fantastic event, and, and to see the support here today with all the teams 
is just making this event what it should be again. Yeah, that's it. And we spoke about it at the managers' meeting too. Like, it's only going to get bigger, and um, you know, the support that's going to come from it's going to be awesome. So now we're stoked to be here, and um, yeah, hopefully we can have this sort of unofficial one in Z we're wearing proud. Yeah, that's awesome, mate. I'll let you catch up with your team. Thanks for talking to us, Tony. Thanks very much, eh? Thanks. He's pretty excited, Bianca. That's for sure. Yeah, they sure are. This is a Bulldogs team. This is a mixture and a and a cluster of a lot of drivers. And I, in particular, wanted to talk to um, Hadley who is coming through the gates now. We've seen him in a couple of teams. We've actually seen him in the Rotorua team and of course the Waikato Raiders team as well. So now he's here for the Bulldogs. So we'll have a quick chat with him and see how that came about. He's a keen, keen, keen teams boy, this one here. Look at him on the back of his car. Oh, yeah. And I hope there's a big, big, big bucket of lollies for us. Come and have a chat, but you need to take your mouth guard out. Hey, Hadley, how are you doing? Yeah, What's bad. in here, the lollies? I'm going to pinch some before we keep going. Hadley, I was just um, giving you a little bit of a talk up while you were coming through the gate. Now, we've seen you in a couple of teams over the over the past couple of years, but tell us, how, do, how did you make it into the Bulldogs team? Um, well, I a week before, a week and three days before New Zealand's, uh, Bryce Carter rung me up and he goes, hey, bro, you want a team? So I was, nah, I'm not really racing this season. I'm good, you know, and he goes, well, what do you need to get your car going? And I said, look, I need an engine. So then James Prophet, he's a 913R. He goes, hey, man, chuck my engine in your car. So then a week and three days, man, had the car from sitting in the, out in the fucking rain for a year to race ready. And here you go. So it was a bit of a rush to get here. Tell us how many hours you've spent in the garage to try and get it here tonight. Oh, too many late hours, man. Like I was going to work at uh, 4 in the morning, and then I'd come home at 5 work on the car till one o'clock, go to bed, crew were there every night, you know, oh, it just countless amount of hours, you strip the whole car down to nothing, you put it all back together, it's just what you do for teams racing. You Absolutely, and if there was, uh, you know, one one driver in this class that I would say is gives 110%, 110% of the time, Hadley, I would always mention you because you are a team, uh, a team's man, not only in the car, but also help out wherever you can. Yeah, sure, man. Like if I had a team next to us was had a broken car and their crew was struggling, and I knew what was wrong, I'd oh, get over there and help them. Just what you do, you know. You walk the walls on the track, not in the pits. Absolutely, and I love the I love the way you explain that too, because you are one of the most genuine people walking around the pits. So it's nice that you mentioned that. Tell us, you got your family here this weekend. What would it mean for you and the family to be able to take this away? Well, oh, I can't say. It'll just be wicked, awesome, fun. You know, we come here to just have fun. We don't want. We just want to go out there and have fun. A winning's a bonus, but we're just here to go hard. Hadley, tell us, are you happy with the draw at the moment, or your draw, I should say? I thought it was stitched up, eh? <laughs> like two Raiders rain, teams, but oh, well, it is what it is, eh? Listen, I've got my lollies. That's all I'm happy with. I love speaking to you as always. Go and join your team. They're way, way over there, so you're going to get a couple of steps and a lot of exercise in. Oh, <laughs> Good luck, Hadley. Well done. Hey, Bianca. Hadley, he really sort of summed it up, you know. There's so much that goes on behind the scenes that the fans don't know about. Just how hard these guys work for their passion. Uh, they may be friends in the pits as well, but when they're out on that racetrack, they're enemies. Yeah, I'm sorry, Mike. I kind of heard what you said. I was a little bit in and out because it's so la loud down here. But listen, we do have Tony, uh, sorry, Booker down here with a couple of drivers. Yeah, I'm standing here with a, a couple of the Gisborne team. Uh, how excited are you, mate, for this event? Oh, we're ready to go, eh? We're pumped. Mate, well, I've seen you race and do things. Your, your car's been going well. You must be excited as well, eh? Oh, yeah, it's pretty exciting. The car doesn't go too bad. We've uh, had a pretty good season so far. Just want to finish it off with winning Peter Berry's. So the sale didn't go through then? No, not yet. No, no, it hasn't. I still, I still want to sell it, though. <laughs> if the wife lets him, that's what he's got to say, people. Look, you guys are putting on a great effort. Uh, they're making the trip over here. Um, the track's looking good. Who you got first up? Uh, racing the Stormers first up. Should be a pretty even race, so we'll see how we go. Hey, that's awesome, guys. Hey, listen, I'll let you carry on. You've already walked around or driven around, but good luck tonight and enjoy. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Thanks. We've got Bianca over there with uh, one of the Alley Cats. Yes, I do. Blake Brooks, great friend of Pitts Media. Blake, you've made the long journey down from Auckland. You've got a reasonably mixed bag in, in, teams of, uh, in terms of your team over here. Can you tell us who's actually on your team this weekend? Uh, so there's myself, um, Sam Wright, I should actually know, Tyler Robinson, Max Walton, uh, Bryce and Carl. Um, it's Bryce and Carl's first team's meeting, so uh, it's good to see what they can do. 
in terms of prep for them, because this isn't just a normal racing, you get out on the track and you go for gold, how do you prep these drivers and keep them calm, make sure they're doing the things they're meant to do? Do you just sit them out? Do you chuck them in the deep end? How do you navigate through that, Blake? Uh, everyone reacts differently. Um, I mean, I love being thrown in the deep end straight off the bat, and I, I think Bryce is the same and Carla's the same, but, I mean, we've got a lot of experience in the team with Gary and Scotty and and, and Corey, and they're not here, and Maddie's our manager this, this time down. So, I mean, there's a lot of experience. Me and Sam have got some meetings under our belt, so we just talk to the boys. We be honest with them. Hey, it's, it's going to hurt, but we're going to have fun, and we're going to go to the end, buddy. So, I mean, we can only say certain things and but they just got to experience it themselves and hey we'll see what happens after the first race it's like anything else i guess that you can explain until the cows come home but until you've experienced for that first time um i, I guess there's just no words that can match what's actually going on 100 oh, percent uh, teams is just a different kettle of fish and i mean this is why we're all here we all love it it's something different you're not just out there spinning laps you're out there being a team and, and supporting each other and being there for the boys so i mean we're all looking forward to it. The boys have been a part of the team, the squad this season, and I mean, it's time to put them to work. Absolutely, and no pressure or anything, Blake, but I have actually in our uh, opening interviews picked Auckland for the team to take this away. And I think I've picked that because there's a good mix of the old and the new, or the senior and the junior drivers. But I think put that together and, you know, with the experience and leadership, Auckland have a really good chance at this. Oh, 100%. I mean, all the teams are good, and every, every team's meeting, they're getting better and better, and it's good to see. Um, but, I mean, the, the thing with our team is there's new boys in there and me and Sam are still fresh and no one knows what we're going to do and what we can do. So, I mean, the boys back home not, know what we can do and it's good to see that we can, you know, put our, put our skills to the limits. Blake, do you think the likes of, um, you know, some of these super stock drivers might be watching you guys, egging you on from home because this is uh, representing not just you guys but your club as well? Oh, 100%. I hope they're all behind us. I, said, I mean, that's why we got a letter on our car, right? We represent our clubs with pride. And, I mean, the, the Auckland boys and the both classes are really good. So I, I hope they're supporting us and we hope to do them proud. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure they are. I'm sure they're watching from home. Very good afternoon to you, by the way, if you are watching. Listen, Blake, I'm going to let you get back to your... Oh, no, look at this. I'm going to let you get back to your team, um, Blake. Good luck for the weekend. Wish you all the luck in the world. Hopefully it doesn't hurt too much, eh? Thank you very much. No worries. Hey, uh, look behind us. Look, I've got the treats from everywhere. For anyone who doesn't recognise him, I mean, oh, I don't know. It could be Sam. Sam, come and talk to us about your team very quickly. Yeah, the Rotor Rascals or the Makita Rotor Rascals, they're here. We're going to try and win back this Peter Barry team. We haven't had it for a couple of years, so it's ours now. We're going to come back and try and take it home, especially with this trophy. You know, we'll try for our trophy cabinet this year. Well, the trophy cabinet is actually going to be rather full. You've got so many uh, so many additions this year, but also the new addition as well. I've, I've been updated by your snap, and the Rotoro track is looking totally different. Uh, yeah, we've got no admin tower, we've got no toilet block, we've just got an empty spot, and Stan and his team have been, uh, the last couple of days, have been taking bulldozers to it, and yeah, the track looks completely different now. So, yeah, good credit to them. You know, they've done an awesome job. How do you think this weekend is going to go? The rain is obviously gone. We're going to be good to go. I don't, I don't think we're going to have to mention that dirty word again. But what are your predictions for this weekend, Sam? Uh, it's going to be a Rascals Ruffies final. There we go. Oh, okay, nice. Okay, there you go. Mike said nice, but we'll see. We'll see. I'll tell you what, Bianca, it's seven long years since the Rascals went back to back. So it's been a long time. And they're another team that has been in the final twice, won it twice. I think they can just share these uh, trophies around, but they've already won enough this year. <laughs> I, want you to try, I want you to try and lift that Peter Barry trophy, Bianca. It's one of the heaviest trophies in New Zealand motorsport, I would think. I will do you that for you, Mike. I know that it was on the back of the ute somewhere, so if I can find it, I will 100% do will, that for will you. Will you load up on some of those lollies and get some sugar <laughs> in you? And we'll have a look, eh? Hey? Okay, we're standing here with the young man. You've done very well this year, Caleb. Uh, Miani Mauler again, mate. The excitement's building. I've been so pumped all day of waiting for this, mate. You must be just as excited. Yeah, no, it's pretty exciting. Eh? A team's race at our home track in front of our home crowd. It doesn't get much better than this, really. It, it doesn't, mate. Now, I don't want you to do what we saw you do a couple of years ago over there, eh, in the corner, mate. <laughs> yeah, no, I've grown a brain. Hopefully we get better than that. <laughs> hey, that's beautiful. Hey, how's the morale on the team at the moment, mate? Yeah, it's good, eh? We're pretty social. All get, get on pretty good, so... Yeah, it's good vibes. That's what we want. That that makes it a lot easier done at the team's race with. Oh, definitely. You know, you can always back the brothers, really, to get you through the fucking thing. 
I saw that, yeah, but he's sorry about that swear word, people. He did stop and stutter there. I think he said rockin'. Rocket, yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, Booker, Booker, ask him uh, if he's already prepared his podium speech. Yeah. Mike wants to know, have you prepared your podium speech? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I heard about the last one, mate. <laughs> hey, listen, we won't hold you up anymore. You've got to run all the way over there and catch up with your team now, Caleb. But good luck tonight, mate, and uh, we'll hope to see you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you guys as well for coming and videoing. Cheers, mate. Well, Bianca, they're, they're all... Oh, here we go. She's got young Ethan Levine coming to talk to her. Ethan Levine. I've seen your dad struggling with that uh, with that Wellington banner there before. I was having a good old laugh. I thought it was actually going to blow him all the way down the uh, down the front straight. Welcome to Miani, and you're a keen, keen teams man. You're here. You're excited. We're good to go. Yeah, happy to be here. Glad the sun's coming out now. It's a bit too bright, actually, but... Um, yeah, last team's many for the season, so I look forward to demoing my car and fixing it all off season. I would not actually second guess that as well. If there's one man that's going to ruin everything, either your your car and every other car on track, it's going to be you. But that is how much you love teams racing, yeah? Yeah, I just honestly, I just I just like wrecking stuff. Um, I loved it from a from a young age, and yeah, you give me the chance to go out there and start wrecking stuff, and I'm happy. This is why time and time again you're in the team. Talk to us about the track. You've had a little uh, little walk on it. You, you've seen it. It's nice and sticky. What are your expectations for it? How's it going to hold up? Um, yeah, looking at this weather, it's quite moist in the air. I reckon it's, it's not going to go slick. Um, probably will rut up. No one, no one around here, she always loves to rut up. Um, but it does look quite hard packed, actually. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see. But um, hopefully I'm looking for a good surface and... Yeah, equal playing field for everyone, so, yeah. Tell us, what kind of service do you like racing teams on? Individual is totally different. I know you guys like a quicker track, but how do you like your tracks for teams racing? Um, for most teams racing, we do end up getting a bit more of a tacky track, um, apart from second night in Palmy for the big Superstock one where they got the Super Saloons, so that normally does slicken it up. Um, but a tacky, a tacky teams track is good. Um, it's actually a bit safer as well. You, you get a bit slick out there. You can um, put your car in some pretty bad positions if it's a bit slick. So, yeah, a tacky team racing track is always, you know, a lot funner. Um, probably a lot, lot safer for the drivers, but and a lot, a lot faster. Um, but yeah, once she goes slick, she's definitely a different playing field. Now I know how competitive you you are, you personally, and your brother, and there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. But tell us, what are your expectations for the weekend, and do you think that Wellington can bring it home? Um, yeah, always the goal is to bring it home. Um, we've got a few few green ones in the team this weekend, uh, which is good. Um, get those good ones, or those young ones, a bit of, a bit of um, experience, uh, and see what they got, give them the opportunity, and you know, build a team for next year. Um, it's always it's always about building. You know, get in, get in those drivers there. If you don't, if you don't bleed new drivers and build a team, you're going to end up. You know, once your your top drivers move on or whatnot, you, you end up getting yourself in a bit of a rut. So it's always about bleeding those guys that want to do it, getting them in, um, seeing what they got really. And how lucky are we that we do have that nice blend from the Wellington? It's a real shame though that of course Ty can't be a part of this team. He did get injured down in. Uh, uh, sorry, Palmerston a couple of months ago and he's still not available for teams racing. Yeah, yeah a bit of a bubble with um, Jaden. Uh, he's definitely going to be a bit like his old man and his, his granddad one day, a bit of a wrecking ball. Um, but yeah, it would, be, it would be good to have Jaden here and a couple of those, those other younger ones that want to do it. But like you said, injuries do happen and it's a bummer of the sport, but we just hope for speedy recoveries. And yeah, we'll have Jaden here next year and we'll all see what Jaden's really got. And I'm going to say he's got something good. Well, like you say, uh, g given the Thai blood, his, his granddad and his dad, I wouldn't expect anything less, right? Yeah, Neva, I would not expect anything less. He will just be a, a wrecking ball out there, which I love to see. I think when he put his, his name up for teams racing, the first person that he actually targeted down in Wellington was Sheldon Adapiri. And I thought, my golly me, if that's a, if that's a statement, uh, uh, you know, I never have seen one quite so strong. Yeah, yeah, we call Brendan TRT, turn right tie, and I don't think Jaden's much different. <laughs> Both meet here today, but listen, thanks for your words. We always like speaking to you. Good luck. Um, tell us your draw. Who are you up against first? Uh, we've definitely got the uh, toughest of the weekend. Um, we've got Rotorua, the, the champions, up first. And then we've got Waikato um, in the second one, who's yeah, another real real good team. Um, we had them, obviously, at the New Zealands in Auckland, and we were, it, was, it was a close one, um, and we got away with it. But, yeah, we always do have a good battle with Waikato. So, yeah, so it can go either way. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm actually starting to get super excited right now to hear you talking about it. Um, you need to go and focus, get ready and do your thing, so we'll let you go. But thank you as always, and good luck for the weekend. Uh, thank you. Awesome. Cheers.
First out the gate, it is the 65 of Royden Hine for the Orange Ruffies. Followed out by the 86, Bradley Singer. Now Bradley Singer taking the East Coast title just two weeks ago. And an interesting story about Brad Singer. He actually was given a Peter Barry body from one of the team's races many, many years ago when he was a little kid. And it used to sit in the garage and Brad Singer would put a beer crate on the floor and sit inside that body and pretend he was racing at the Peter Barry Memorial Stock Car Teams. And now here we are, 2024, and he is realizing a dream. So your lineup for the Orange Ruffies, 11 of Jason Stevens, 24, Daniel Melling, 27, Isaac Fothergill, 65, Royden Hind, 81, Darren Yaxley, and the 86 of Bradley Singer. So we see the 26, Kayla Mooney will go from grid position one with the 65 of Royden Hine on the outside for the Ruffies. Then it'll be Brad Singer for the Ruffies in the 86 car on three. Outside him for the Vulcans, the 15 of Sturzacre. Trying to pick up that no, the 3NZ car of Cody Lockett that will go from grid position 7. 24 of Daniel Melling for the Ruffies on, uh, sorry, Lockett on 5. And Daniel Melling on 6. Final row. We see the 267. 287 Bailey Chapman on eight. As we get ready to rock and roll, let's go. The lights are green. Peter Berry Memorial Teams is a go. And already the 15 of Sturzacre spins on turn one. 10 lap races through these heats today. And it's the 26 of Mooney leading out from the 86. Bradley Singer in that second position giving chase. Daniel Melling playing, paying close attention to Chapman up there at turn one. Chapman gets a big serve. Singer closing in on the race leader. Third place there for the Ruffies, the 81 of Darren Yaxley. Royden Hine gets taken to the grass by the 15 of Sturzacre. Has to redress. But Mooney trying to stay away from the prowling 86 of Singer. Chapman now paying attention. Sturzacre gets taken to the wall. New race leader. The Ruffies out in front with the 86 of Bradley Singer. Oh, roadblock on the main straight for Chapman in the 287. It is the Ruffies leading from Vulcans. Ruffies Vulcans. And there's the contact on the back straight that we want to see. The 3 and Z car push hard in the wall. Cody Lockett hard into the wall on the back straight. 81 of Darren Yaxley was in that mix as well. Still Singer out in front. He's got a Royden Hine. He's got Hine running shotgun. Singer runs out wide. Is there a problem there for Singer? He's going to let the 65 of Royden Hine go back by. That's a smart move. He can see that the 3NZ of Cody Lockett is there, trawling the pole line. Dar Daniel Melling backing off down here at turn four for the Ruffies as well. Back around the outside goes Singer. Nice work done by the Ruffies. Royden Hine running block, and now we'll go after the 3NZ car. One of the Ruffies drivers parked up on one and two. Ruffies looking like they could be in control at the moment with the race lead. But it is the Vulcans running in two and three. Hit down there for Melling. Gets turned by the 287 of Chapman. Three laps to go. It is Singer still out in front. Royden Hine running shotgun. Hine currently in fourth position in the 65 car. We keep an eye on the three NZ down the bottom turn here. Cody Lockett. And again, the 287 car of Chapman spins off turn number four. 
15 of Callum Sturzacre in second place, still on the lead lap with the 26 of Mooney. The Vulcans will be desperate to stop the 86 car. And again, the Ruffies doing great block work. Managing to keep Cody Lockett in the three and Z car pinned and then spins him on the entry to turn number three. White flag with one to go for Singer. The 86 car for the Ruffies could take the big slice of points and it'll all come down to where they stack up in behind. Lockett lies in wait in the three and Z car on turn three. Royden Hines steams around the outside. He's gonna run block for Singer. Singer gets, oh he double guesses it. Where's he gonna go? Singer's gonna have to push him across the line. He does so well, oh, that was close. And Sturzaker's got it. Sturzaker stole it. Sturzaker steals it by 0.04 of a second. Wow. 15V Callum Sturzaker, the unofficial race one winner for the Vulcans. 86 Bradley Singer for the Ruffies in second. Race is still live. So the final drivers come under the flag before the caution. Wow. And that was just heat number one, race fans. So unofficial. 15 for the Vulcan, Sturzaker for the win. 86 Ruffies, Bradley Singer in second. 65 for the Ruffies, Royden Hind will finish third with the 26 Vulcans driver, Kaylin Mooney, fourth. Three NZ Vulcans, Cody Lockett for fifth. Sixth place, 287 Vulcans driver, Bailey Chapman. Seventh, 24. Orange Ruffies, Darren Melling, and the 81 Orange Ruffies driver for Darren Yaxley. Wow, the Ruffies will feel like they were absolutely burgled out of that. Sing a long time race leader with a provisional points total of 130 to 65 in the Vulcans' favour. Wow, it'll. That was uh, certainly what we want to see in teams racing. It looked like Royden Hine was going to be able to put the block moves on off that final turn to allow Bradley Singer to go through. But definitely the two Vulcans drivers, they worked well together and just were able to just pin Singer enough for that very, very slightest margin race win. Give them a round of applause as they come round. Vulcans working hard, taking out Teams race number one here at the Napier City Council Peter Barry Memorial Stock Car Teams. Race number two up next, it will be the Stratford Stormers versus the Gisborne Gladiators. We know the Gladiators, very familiar with this racetrack, long history of doing teams racing here. Well, I certainly didn't expect that finish. But that is the beauty of teams racing. Mike, it certainly is. I'm just down here, uh, pit side. I've got Amaron going up and down uh, the grid. You can see the look in all of these drivers' eyes. Unfortunately, the orange ripping that uh, 86B just uh, drove past us, heads down. It just comes down to experience, doesn't it? Uh, but uh, when you're trying to uh, avoid the blockers of 3NZ, Cody Lockett, and then you've got Kayla Mooney as well, I didn't think there was any chance he's going to get through, to be fair. Yeah, it wasn't very much room left for him at all, uh, all. What a debut though for Bradley Singer. Brilliant drive, um, almost did everything right. In fact, didn't really do anything wrong, just the Vulcans had a little bit more experience on the final lap. 100%, I was actually rooting for him all the way, but uh, if that was a start start of the meeting and, and the finish of the meeting, I'm pretty happy that, that it's happened that way. That was an awesome race. Well, I tell you what, if that was a final, we'd all go home really happy, wouldn't we? <laughs> because, you know, that was excitement all the way through. And there was a lot of contact, a lot of hits, some good hard hits as well. But all, all cars, drivers still able to drive back in through the pit. Yeah, listen, and we can't go and talk to any of their drivers, of course, until they've gone and had their medicals and their head checks. So we will go down and talk to uh, Sturzaker. But what a drive from him. He got spun up in the in the first lap and, and came away with the win. That is definitely uh, the drive of the night for me so far. It doesn't get any better than that. Oh, well, hopefully we can top that uh, and just keep getting better and better as this meeting unfolds. Uh, as an added bonus and prestige for our next matchup with the Stormers versus the Gladiators, it is the Rees Shield that is up for grabs as well. 
really yeah, looking forward I think to that. I think Emma on our, um, our cameraman will be able to go and get a couple of uh, shots of that too. I see him screaming down the pits at the minute. Bryce uh, Bryce has got a hold of it. He's got a tight hold of it. He doesn't want to give that up either, does he? There we go. I don't know if everybody can see that at home, but that is the Rees shield. It's a pretty cool looking shield too. Hey, we do appreciate everybody at home uh, having some patience here. We're just making sure the track is right and the drivers uh, for the second race. Of course, it's Stratford and uh, Gisborne. They're about to come on the track shortly. Yeah, let's have a quick look at the lineup. So the 22 for Stratford is Jeremy Bunting. Uh, the 32, Todd Duffy. 96 is Carl Giddy. 517, Mark Woods. 617 of Mason Woods. And the 712 of Stephen Reid with the team manager, Bryce Jensen. And for the Gisborne Gladiators... The 13 of Lucas Hay, 48 of Josh Mulcahy, 71 Ethan Bruce, 84 Hayden Barker, who you interviewed earlier on, 164 of William Carr, and six driver Dana Kingsbear, who is also team manager alongside Nigel Hazelton. God, let me tell you, I found this trophy. It doesn't look heavy at all, but I went to pick it up, and oh my gosh, that's a proper deadlift. Just as well, the cameraman's not here, but I can confirm that it's a very heavy trophy. Hey, Mike? Look, it, it didn't happen unless we can see it. <laughs> I'll see what I can do, hey. So a little bit of moisture going down on the track, as I explained earlier on, you know, with the uh, likelihood that it was going to be raining today, they just were unsure how much moisture to put into this track, and you can see we need to put a little bit in, but that's a good thing. Uh, because it's even harder taking moisture back out of a racetrack. <laughs> so the first of the Stormers, the 517 Mark Woods goes to the outside on grid number two. I'll just uh, correct that. They will go from grid one with Mark Woods on the inside because it'll be Barker in the 84 that for the Gladiators it'll go off two. Grid three for the 13 of Lucas Hay for the Gladiators. The 617 Stormers for Mason Woods on four. Looks like grid five for the Stormers will be Todd Duffy in the 32 car. With the 164 of William Carr for the Gladiators off six. 71, Ethan Bruce for the Gladiators goes from seven. And the 742 of Stephen Reed, who will go from grid position number eight for the Stormers. Pit gate locked and loaded thanks to Fence Direct. Alexander Electric pay shoot. About to make its way off the track. Here we go. Peter Barry Memorial Teams heat number two. The Stormers versus the Gladiators for the re-shield as well. And Booker is on the brakes. Barker not keen to go. And it's the 5-1-7 out in front. Oh, big hit already on turn two. Hard hit, hard contact in the wall. And suspension damage already for the 71 car. Ethan Bruce collapsed right front suspension, still on the gas down into turn one. Cars a bit, bit hard to control, being chased by the 32. The 517 of Mark Woods is parked up in the fence, so one of the Stormers drivers already out. We've got another car pinned up the wall as well. Looks like one of the Gisborne drivers has pinned the 742 of Stephen Reed. I think it's a 13G, is it? Parked up. Thirty-two race leader. Todd Duffy for the Stormers is in front with the 84G of Hayden Barker in second. We go red. Red for it would a little either be for the car on turn two or an exposed cage situation. There on turn one. 742 of Stephen Reed. Well, some hard contact early on in this re shield teams race.
Well, Bianca, there's no shortage of action early on at this PB Teams event. She's not answering because she's so uh, keen to see it. Mike, sorry, I am here. Sorry, no, I was just trying to turn on my uh, microphone. Yeah, I'm actually down here. I'm going to interrupt really quickly and uh, take the tension away from what's happening on the track to what happened a, a couple of minutes ago. I'm here with uh, Cody, Cody Lockett from uh, Wanganui. That was an absolutely epic win. You just turned it on and knew exactly that you had a little bit of damage coming down this back straight and you're like, I have to go into block position. What a job you did. Yeah, no, it was good. A bit too close for us, but, yeah, no, we'll take it. I mean, there's close and then there's whatever that was. That was super close, yeah? Yep, too close. <laughs> but how good uh, was your, uh, your the, the gentleman over here who actually took the one who doesn't want to come and talk to us? He's just a little bit camera shy, I think. He, um, knew, he knew straight away he got spun up in that first lap, but he just kept racing to the flag, took away the win. I mean, he must be pretty happy with himself. Yep, no, he should be. He screwed on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very good. Hey, uh, tell us, what does it mean to you and the team? You're just a relatively young team. What does it mean to actually take away that win first off? Um, um, it's good. We're a young team. We're building, and yeah, I think we're going forward. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I think you guys might be the team to win. I didn't pick you to win, but uh, I still got a close eye on you anyway. But Mike, what do you reckon? Any questions for Young Cody Lockett down here? Oh, I just think they did a great job. You know, um, it looked like they're on the back foot all the way through, and then came down to the last lap. Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, who are you? Who are you up against in your second race tonight, Cody? Uh, Stratford. Stratford. So this is why you're here watching with our uh, close intent. Yep. Yep. No, nah, that's it. Well, they've got a couple of cars down already, so you might be in luck. Yeah, hopefully. Hey, uh, we'll throw it back up to you, Mike. I can barely see. I'm too short to see anything around here, so uh, you might have a better idea of what's going on. Hey, thanks. Uh, that was a big, hard hit from the 13 Gladiators driver. Lucas Hay put a big, massive hit on the 742 of Stephen Reid for the Stormers and put him out of this team's race. So Gladiators showing us that they know how to put in those hits. We didn't uh, certainly... Well, we knew they would. They're not disappointing. 32, Todd Duthie for the Stormers is your race leader as we go back to green and straight away going back to the infield, the 5-1-7. Mark Woods is back in this team's race. Keep an eye on the 13 car, Lucas Hay is looking for a victim and he will take on the 6-1-7 of Mason Woods and Hay gets spun by Woods. Going through the 32, the Stormers are doing some good block work. Oh, and he slips around the outside again. Duffy is on the march. The 164 of William Carr couldn't do anything for the Gladiators. And now the 71 is trying to hold up. Ethan Bruce is on the break, holds up the race leader. New race leader now for the Stormers. 617, Mason Woods has gone through. Woods down into turn number three, chased by the 84 of Hayden Barker, both on the lead lap. Barker now can sense his opportunity as Woods goes into defensive mode. Four laps to go. The reshield up for grabs. The 71G of Ethan Bruce, remember he's got damage to the right front. Puts the brake on and holds up the 32 of Duffy. Duffy slips, tries to slip by on the inside, gets taken to the grass and has to address that situation. Hasn't yet got back on the track. And Barker for the Gladiators has taken over the lead. Third different race leader. And with the laps ticking by, there's no one within half a lap of Barker. He's got a teammate in front of him. Two laps to go. The Tire General 13G car of Lucas Hay does a fantastic job of pinning the 32 of Duffy to the grass. One lap to go. The Gladiators out in front with the 84 of Hayden Barker. The reshield on the line is a bonus. And a Gladiators car in front as Barker steams around the outside of his teammate to take the checkered flag. The Gladiators have done a great job. And it is not over yet. Only two cars across the line so far with a 617S of Mason Woods in second. We're still live.
The 13 of Hay will come to the line. He was certainly right in the thick of the action. Plenty of Gladiators cars still circulating, but some pretty torn up machinery. Look at the back of the 32S car of Duthie's. He's got right rear damage, right front damage. I think he's got three flat tires at least because that left rear is also deflated. And as the caution lights come on, a provisional result for the Gladiators, the 84 Hayden Barker taking the win. 617S Mason Woods second. 13G Lucas Hay third. 71G Ethan, uh, that's just changed on me. 32S Todd Duthie being credited with third. 13G Lake, uh, Lucas Hay four. 71G Ethan Bruce in fifth. And final finisher 164G William Carr. So it looks like well, it's definitely a points advantage that we know to the Gladiators. They'll take the re-shield. And I think a provisional. Uh, we'll just work that out for you. Hey, uh, Mike, while you're working that out, I'm down here with Kayla Mooney. That was such a good win. I was, it came so close. A win is a win, but tell us, you were right there on the uh, start-finish line. Did you think you could do it? Oh, it was always worth a try. Uh, that's why we stopped there. Um, yeah, well... It, we knew it was close, you know, it's when I'd come around to turn four or turn three to see the, you know, our Wongas crew, you know, cheering us on. So that's when I knew that we had done it. So, yeah, it was close. It was really insightful too of Cody Lockett just to realise he had to go into that block position literally within an instant. I could almost see the brain tick over go, right, this is my job now. Uh, as a team, do you speak about instances like that that would happen? And how do you explain to these newer drivers, if you do have to make that change, how to make that change? Uh, we, we briefly touch on it. Um, we don't really go on how we're going to do it because well, you know, we just take it how it comes. And um, yeah, you know, we all have a set plan on what we're going to do, but any role can change at any time. So yeah, we just wing it really. How good is it though that a team can come this close? You're all smiling. I mean, you're, you're straight across the way here to Orange Ruffies. They're not smiling. But in all honesty, that was such a good team's race. It could have gone either way. Of course, you guys were the victors, but it means a lot to you as well because you actually raced so well as a team. There was not one individual person racing out there. Yeah, no, we have a pretty good um, you know, team environment. So, you know, we all gel quite well together. And, you know, so it's, yeah, it is, it is good. <laughs> Absolutely, and I think everybody loved it too. The whole crowd, I was over on uh, turn four and they all erupted like, oh, this this was on. It did help that it was your crowd, of course, but uh, well done. Congratulations. I'll let you get back to it. You guys don't seem to have many damage. It seems to be all systems are go down here. Yeah, all the cars look pretty good, so it's a good check over again and yeah, get ready for the uh, Stratford race. Awesome. Go hard. Be safe. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Great interview there, Bianca. Let's look at our confirmed results from our first team's race, the Ruffies versus the Balkans. It was a win by 130 points to 65 for the Balkans. And your provisional results from that Stratford versus Gisborne matchup, the Stormers and the Gladiators, the provisional result 155.40. It doesn't matter how hard the job is, we suck it up and get it done. No matter how dirty our hands have to get, we suck it up and get it done. Suck it up, suck it up, suck it up. Out for sake, suck it up, suck it up, suck it up. Out for sake, suck, suck it up. Suck it up and get it done with suckitup.co.nz. If motorsport is in your blood, then Speedway Garage Palmerston North and Wanganui is your home away from home. From Speedway trivia nights, car reveals and good dirt track banter, along with great food that has our famous steaks, roast of the day and classic pub meals, Speedway Garage is the place to be. We look forward to hosting you at one of our two locations, 528 Main Street Palmerston North or 45 Anzac Parade Wanganui. Don't forget to check out the Pitts TV Garden Bar. See you at the finish line. Hot laps are done. Now we will see who's coming down to get the three minute bell. First in is the 208 of Blake Brooks. The Alley Catch driver will park up. Tony Allen Auto Service Limited sponsored team. Looks like Willie Stevenson for the Maulers will come in. 
Hey, uh, Mike, I thought I might just check on you. How's your nerves up there? You all good? Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> my, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, what am I saying? Um, <laughs> I'll tell you, the, the first time I saw the Hawkeyes when the Superstock teams at Palmerston North, I was a wreck. I can absolutely imagine. I'm funny you say that. I was just speaking to Jason Long up there too. It's really good to see Jason no Long no longer actually teams racing or in the Superstock, uh, but he's here lending a hand. Um, he had to actually be a really good man of influence to keep that, you know, the, the team calm and, and really sort of give a, a lot of guidance and wisdom. And of course, we've got Randy T here as well. He's here watching, I mean, he's from the Bay, of course, but he could also be here supporting the um, Auckland team. I will try and uh, speak to him shortly and look at these guys here they go over the fence but hey you've really got your uh, job cut out for you to list in this race especially Mike because bo both teams having white bodies it's going to be a hard one for you to call and pick yeah 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 we'll just rely on the old lap scoring as well but hey I'll, I'll hopefully you do get to talk to Randy T uh, a little bit later if you can because I just want to know if he is sitting on the fence between the alley cats and the maulers you know that's going to be my first question I'll ask him too eh <laughs> He so, actually might avoid me because of that too. Yeah, he may well do. He's a humble man sometimes, is Randy T. So the 94 car of Sam Wright's there for the Alley Cats as well. We already had the 208 for Blake Brooks, 85 Stevenson. And then you can see right behind just about everybody's there. Just checking on Humble in the 46 for the Maulers. Sydney 5 car there of Leroy O'Reilly. They were just looking in the right side of the engine there just having a look in there I'm not really sure what they could be adjusting or looking at there the 89 for the alley cats is also there Max Walton 62 on the outside of the motorworks tow oh, on the inside were well, sandwiched in fact between those two motorworks tow trucks the 62a of Tyler Robertson so only three cars actually on the infield waiting to go out onto the track everybody else down here using that three minute bell and as I explained earlier on there is only one three minute bell when it starts that's how long you have and we've just gone past one and a half minutes so still about a one minute 20 to go and if you think a minute 20 is a long time when you're looking at it counting down it isn't when you're there trying to work on a race car they lower back down the 85 car of Stevenson so another driver that's just wanted to make that little adjustment to the left rear shock David Jones, clerk of the course, just talking to the drivers to make sure that everybody is good to go. Remember, no one can leave this three minute bell area until he says so. Always remember um, Teams Race a long, long time ago when I was st starting to learn the old craft of commentating. And I was on the infield and there was a red light and I took advantage to go and chat to Regan O'Brien <laughs> while he was on the track. Uh, and it was a great interview. But afterwards, the other team tried to protest and say I was giving him outside information, which I wasn't, but could have been, you know, maybe looked that way. But who in their right mind now would go out on the middle of a track? <laughs> or who would even be allowed to do that? It just wouldn't happen. So you can tell how, how much Speedway has evolved over the last so many years. Caleb Island has gone on to grid position one in the 19 car for the Maulers. And he is right out on that track as well. He's going to squeeze up the alley catch driver. And that will be the 351 of Bryce Vasey for the alley cats. He'll go from two. The 92, Carl Garnett for the alley cats on three. The 46 of Humble for the Maulers on four. Waiting for the third row. Moving up onto grid position number six will be the 89 of Max Walton for the Alley Cats. Willie Stevenson for the Maulers on five. Then it will be Sam Wright in the 94 for the Alley Cats who slot into grid number seven with the 10 of Ethan Dorward on eight. That's your grid lineup. Heat number three, Napier City Council, East Coast Peter Barry Memorial Stock Car Teams. Parked up behind the Alexander Electric Payshoot.
Let's go, teams racing. Caleb Island straight away on the gas. Row four hasn't moved. Dawood and Wright still parked up on the main straight. It is the 19 of Caleb Island out in front. One of the alley catch drivers has spun. I think it was the 92 of Garnet. Caleb Island in front, 351. Vasey giving chase. Then it's the 85 of Stevenson. Humble gets spun on the back straight. Door to think. Oh, hard hit on the wall. The wing has come loose. 351. Vasey goes through. 19. Caleb Island in second now. Island tries to get the run. Oh, hard hit into Vasey. And Ireland spins himself out. Willie Stevenson now will pick up the chase in the 85 for the Maulers. Well, Caleb Ireland putting in a heart. Oh, we go red. Well, we've gone red. Is that for the 19 car? Where's the pace chute heading right now? And they are looking at that car that's on the back straight. Is, is it a wheel guard? 351 of Bryce Vasey. Okay, so Vasey disqualified for attacking over the pole line. Oh, I that, hate this rule, but goodness yeah, me. That's the word from Bill Clarkson, the referee. Yeah, that's a huge call and a huge loss for this team. So drama already in round three. Stevenson will now pick it up as the race leader for the Maulers. The 85 crossing the stripe with seven to go. Still the 19 of Caleb Island for the Maulers sitting there in second position. And waiting for the third driver to cross the stripe there. That will be the 89 Alley Cats of Max Walton. Walton a long way behind. The Alley Cats now on the back foot here in this round. The 92 car of Carl Garnett just trolling the pole line. Ethan Dorwood under attack from the 89 car of Walton. Walton in third place, so the 10 of Dorwood is doing a good job to block his run. Maulers are looking strong early on. Sam Wright's on the grass in the 94. The Alley Cats are in trouble. Dorwood still blocks the run of the 89. Walton finally gets around the outside. Stevenson for the Maulers in the 85 car is the race leader. Running shotgun with him there is the 19 of Caleb Island. Keep an eye on the 94 of Sam Wright. Wright's going to turn right and does so. Stevenson also gets collected by his teammate. Now Caleb Island in the 19 car is the race leader. Contact on the back straight. Humble takes one of the Alley Cats into the wall. In fact, that's the 89 of Walton for the Alley Cats that he's pinned in there. Still that loose wing sitting on top of the 19 car. Oh, Caleb Island's got a right flat tyre. The right rear. As the 92 of Garnet misses his opportunity on Stevenson. And the 85 Maulers driver has gone back into the race lead. The 46 of Humble is down here on pit turn. Will he run block for Stevenson? And you bet your life on that one. Mauler's running one and two, but how long can Caleb Island stay in second? Island with a big shot. Huge shot there on the 94 of Sam Wright. And that wing, well, looking a little precarious right now. And you can see the damage to Caleb Island in that 19 car. Sam Wright gives the 46 of Humble a nudge. Two laps to go. Another shot up there at turn one and two. And that was with the 92 car of Garnet and the 10 of Dorwood. White flag is out for Stevenson. Half a corner to go for the 85 Maulers driver. Dorwood pins the 92. Oh, he missed. And Stevenson takes the big points. Well, we're still green. Stevenson has come across the line for the win. Caleb Island, I think, has picked up second place. We've got to wait for those provisional results. And we go caution with the light. So race is over, 85B. Willie Stevenson for the Maulers for the win. 19B of Caleb Island, second.
It's at least 140 points there. That's provisional, of course. We'll give you the official results as they come to hand, but it looks like a win for the Maulers, 150 to 45 for the Alley Cats. Brilliant way for the Maulers to start off for the 2024 Peter Barry Memorial Teams campaign. Hey, uh, Mike, can you hear me up there? Sure can. Oh, good. I'm actually down here, right down the end of the pit. So I'm down here with Hayden Barker, actually, who was the winner for that uh, the Gisborne Gladiators race. Hayden, that was a great win. The cars took a little bit of damage, though. Can you talk us through that? Uh, yeah, a few cars took some damage there. Um, boys will get it fixed up for the next one. We had a pretty simple plan going into that. A lot of um, new drivers for us, so, yeah, simple plan, executed it and come away with a win. How good was this driver over here, the 71G? He took some severe uh, front suspension damage, but he just made a nuisance of himself and put his hand up and said, everybody stop me if you can, and they actually couldn't. And, that, and that's what it's about too. He knew that even with a damaged car, he still had a job to do and switched his roles and done his job, so, yeah. Oh, and that's what it's all about. Sorry, sorry, we have an alley cat who uh, has lost his steering and nearly took us all out. At least he's uh, dedicated to the cause, right? But hey, you've also... Hang on, sorry, Emeron, I'm just going to pick you up. You've also taken away the Rees Shield for the weekend, so you maintain that for the, the next uh, season, is that correct? Uh, yeah, it will come back to Gisborne now. I'll go back to Gisborne, and I think first meeting next year, we'll put it up at the first race, depending where that is and when that is, so yeah. Now, I have had the privilege of uh, being to the Gisborne track quite a few times, and I know that uh, Gisborne, the Gisborne track look after its drivers like nobody else does in the country. Can you tell us, do you think they're all watching at home? Oh, hopefully they are. A lot of racing tonight. Gisborne's running tonight, tomorrow night, and so, yeah. Some will be watching, probably some won't. They'll see later on. Well, if anybody is uh, watching from the Gisborne track, we thank you for tuning in because it means a lot uh, for this team to be here. It's, they've come a long... Oh, I mean, it's not a long way, but it's a horrible road. They've come a long way to get the job done, and that's what they've certainly done for Gizzy. Awesome. Thank you. Now, I've actually had word, would you believe, I think he said that 5R car has a broken back suspension. I can't confirm that because I'm so short I can't see over the fence. However, our cameraman's going to get onto it really quickly uh, because here come... Actually, there's not many people here to jump over the fence, if I'm being fair. I might have to go and try and fix it myself. <laughs> I'm sure they'll come a-running. <laughs> I think they, uh, here they come, yeah, here they come now, they're men on a mission. I don't know if Emeron can uh, get them all behind me, but they're a running all right. With the only happy man in the whole crowd is Alan Levine, and I wonder why. Yeah, oh, yeah I bet he <laughs> is. Look at him, look at him. <laughs> oh, he's a dag here, so here he goes. <laughs> over the ladder, over the ladder. So that double, <laughs> that 55R car there of Dan Holland that's parked up for the three-minute bell, He's under his triple five R on the live timing, but it's 55 on the car. So again, we've got just about everybody down here for this three minute bell. The five R car just headed infield, Henderson. He definitely wasn't up to race pace in the hot laps. We have a very concerned looking uh, Samuel Ashton down here as well. He's not looking happy, he's running too. They're all running. Gosh, this is mayhem down here at the minute. Uh, which, I mean, it's teams racing through and through, right? I can actually say that the Rotorua team was here and lined up on the dummy grid as soon as uh, the previous the previous race was out. So they're one very focused, determined team. So I'm actually surprised to see all of this uh, work going on in their cars right now. Yeah, well, the you know perfectionists. Uh, everybody needs to have a good start in that first round. You, the last thing you want is to come away with 30 or 40 points out of the first round because you're really on the back foot and, and it's an uphill battle. Everyone wants to make sure these cars are dialed in. Absolutely, and I guess that's why they've come away with the uh, team's nationals title, eh? <laughs> Absolutely, and the, that's a reputation that you have to keep building on. You know, everybody wants to defeat the New Zealand champions, and they're only just recently crowned. 
Um, so the rascals are riding on a high, but everybody else wants to bring them down to earth. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And I think if there's one team that can do it, here we go, Wellington's on. Yeah, I, I agree with you there, Bianca. I just want to make note uh, that Alan Levine was the only person I've seen tonight that actually used the ladder to get over the fence. <laughs> well, he is getting on a bit now, isn't he? But I'll tell you what, he's always got a smile on his face. <laughs> his, uh, I bet you his wife Sue, if she's not here, she's probably watching from home going, you keep going, Bianca, you give him as much crap as you can. That's an impressive transporter that they came in on as well. I wonder if I could get a ride home with them, eh? Uh, probably not. They're probably full, but it's very, very impre impressive. I actually think that came from down south too. Bianca, you could hide in that and they wouldn't even know you were there for two weeks. <laughs> you know what? I could actually jump in uh, Ethan's car on the way down. They would have no clue I'm enjoying myself in the back of the truck. One of the guys you see out there in the uh, infield there was Regan O'Brien. Now, he's won this championship with the Maulers before and uh, normally driving the super stock. And he's doing a great job out there working as part of the trackside crew. This three minute is definitely coming down to the wire, isn't it, Mike? Yeah, it is, because we've just got 20 seconds remaining. I think we have all sorts of panic about to erupt right now. Yeah, well, Davy Jones is there probably conversing with the referee, saying, hey, time's running out, we're going to count down. Eight, seven, six, five, it's just about done. Everybody's got to be able to drive away. So you can see the crossed arms there, Davy Jones, clerk of the course, says three minute bell is over. If you're still working on your cars, time is up. You're probably going to go infield and then we'll wait and see who he releases. It's going to be interesting to see who drives away from this because the... 55R car definitely was released off the tow truck after that three minute bell. Anxious drivers here wanting to go to their grid. Young guns will go from the inside on one, hey, um, rascals sorry. on two. Uh, here's a What's your name? Uh, Brett Henderson. Brett, Hend oh, Brett Henderson, you must be uh, Dion's dad. Tell us what was wrong with the car. Um, the top of the um, adjuster for the shock absorber has blown off and so then the whole car's fallen down. Okay, so we came really, really close to that uh, three minute bell. Can you tell us if he's able to race or not? Is he done? Uh, no, I don't think he's allowed to. I think we've gone over the three minute bell, haven't we? I believe you did. You were right on it. I don't know. Uh, the clerk yeah. has released him, but I don't think, so. I don't think he <laughs> but he could be up to race in the next race because you've got it fixed. Definitely. Awesome. Well, there you go, guys. It was the quickest update in the history of updates. <laughs> You know, you can make sure in the race shed that prep is done and that cars are 100%. Motorsports, motorsport, you can go out and you can do a lap and you can break something. It's just part of motorsport as, in, as a whole and things happen and unfortunately it's happened for them at a crucial time. And Mike, how, I mean that just makes tonight a lot more interesting doesn't it because every single member of the, these two teams and every team here actually have a job to do so when something like that happens and you're a crucial member of the team, these guys will be out here now, they cannot communicate with each other, they'll be trying to, uh, look here we go, they're coming out on the grid but they will be trying to uh, readjust that plan, they'll go plan A, plan B, probably plan C right down to plan if maybe but uh, I tell you this is going to be an epic race just uh, a quick note this uh, water truck Amaron and I are trying to go and get a ride in it later on tonight so we might be able to bring you some laps from the actual trap how exciting is that <laughs> you get all the good jobs Bianca <laughs> sometimes I do so it's the 10 car that will go from the inside for the young guns Ben Ellis former national champion the 51 513 Callum Flavel the three time winner for the rascals on the outside on grid two. Looks like the pick up the one, trying to pick up the number there, 144 for the rascals to go from three with the 6W of Gaskin on the outside on four. Then it's the 31, 21, sorry, Tim Parker, who goes from five with grid six for the 91 of Coxhead for the Rascals. Then that final row, we will see the five car of Dion Henderson and on the outside on grid eight, the 46 of Levine. 
That's how they stack them up. Rascals versus Young Guns. Teams race number four. Napier City Council, Peter Barry Memorial Stock Car Teams. This will be a tough team's race. Little bit of movement, then they put the greens and already Levine into reverse. He wanted to get by on that outside row with three cars still stopped there. 144 takes over the race lead. Paddle for the Rascals out in front. Made a nice tap and run pass with the 10 car of Ben Ellis in second place. Then some block work here by the 5R of Henderson. The 21 spins himself out, Tim Parker. Just in front of his teammate Levine. And Levine goes into damage mode and puts the 51. The 10 car having to redress. Ben Ellis has to go back to the infield to turn around. The 144 car is your race leader. Paddle for the Rascals out in front. 5R of Dion Henderson in second place. So it's Rascals running one and two. Third car on the track is the 10 of Ellis for the Young Guns. The Young Guns need to turn this around. They've still got seven laps to do it. One of the Rascals pinned up against the wall by Levine. But Levine, a vital member of the Young Guns, needs to be on this racetrack. Waiting, the six car. Gaskin sitting down here on turn three. Waiting for the race leader, Steve Paddle, to come around the outside. Paddle switches his attack back to the inside. Gaskin gets on the break down into one. Slows up the race leader. Henderson in the 5R car is right there as well. Henderson slides up the inside, takes over the race lead. And back through for second place, the 144R. In chase, the 10 of Ben Ellis, Young Guns driver. They have to do something here because well, uh, the Rotorua team have got three drivers in the top five. 91R, Tony Cox said, sits there in fifth position. Only four cars in race pace. Redress up the top turn for, I think, the 10. And again, the 6W of Gaskins doing some great block work, although he got taken to the grass that time. Ellis sandwiched by the two rascals, and Ellis will get on the break as he sees the 144R in the mirrors. Young Gun starting to get some momentum going. Big hit up in the turn number two. Ellis got taken in hard. Paddle in the 144 was your race leader. And now the 5R Henderson is under attack from two Young Guns drivers and gets spun on the main straight. It's now the 21W of Parker who's gone through to take the lead. The Young Guns have turned it around. 21, your race leader, just comes past the commentary position. Keep an eye on Levine in the 46. He's going to go into block mode on the 5R of Henderson. Henderson currently second on the track. Levine couldn't quite squeeze him to the pole. Pins him up against the fence just before the start finish. One lap to go. And great block work there by the Rascals driver. Just parks up casually. Here's your checker. Parker's going to take the 100 points. Well, from the depths of despair to taking the major points for the 21W of Parker, Young Guns showing how you turn it around. The race still live. 5R Dion Henderson has crossed in second. Ellis back out on the racetrack as well. He will come in under the flag. So unofficially, 21W Parker for the win. 5RD on Henderson second. 10W Ben Ellis third. 91R Tony Cox head fourth. 6W Paul Gaskin fifth. 46W Ethan Levine. Final finisher, 
in sixth. So that would give a provisional at the moment of 110 points to 85 to the Young Guns. Well, from the very beginning there, it was certainly the Rascals that were in command of that. Levine, long time pinned up against the fence there on the main straight, was finally able to get away and score some points. Well, possibly score some points looking up at the scoreboard, which has changed on us again. And the Young Guns really found the right key to unlock the cell and go through to take that and get the win. Keeping them in contention. 100 points plus out of that first round. They can't be too disappointed with that, especially over the Rascals, the current New Zealand champions. So the amended provisionals, 135 to 60. You shine so bright. It haunts me. I'm lost in this thick black sea. We've just got a couple of spits of rain, but listen, we're not going to look skyward. I'm actually down here with Bry Bryce. Bryce, I mean, the look on your face says everything. You got disqualified from your race. Uh, apparently, it was attacking across the pole line. How do you feel about that? Yeah, obviously gutted for the boys, you know. Like, yeah. we don't intentionally mean to do it. Yeah. Um, it's just one of those moments where you're just like, you got to get them, you got to get them, you know, yeah. clear your way out. But yeah. obviously, it backfired, and we boys got a win, and congratulations on their win. But yeah. Hey, onwards and upwards. It's sometimes just a moment of should I, shouldn't I. It happens so quick. Uh, you kind of zigged, but you should have zagged. And it's a, it's a gamble that didn't pay off, but sometimes it does. But unfortunately tonight, it just, they pinged you. And it was literally straight away. Those reds came on. When the reds came on, though, did you actually know that uh, they were stopping because of you? Yeah, I had a, I had a feeling it was because of me. Because I, kn I, I knew that I was close to the pole line, but I didn't realise I went over it, you know. And it's hard because the pole line's pretty much the same colour as the track. So, yeah. but hey, lesson learnt. Don't do it again. Yeah. And not only uh, to, to to add salt to the wound, you got disqualified and defined. Yeah, oh, it is what it is. You know, you know the penalties when you come in doing this kind of stuff, whether you risk it or you don't. You know. I can almost guarantee, though, Bryce, that you are never going to make that mistake again. No, nah, never. You know, don't want to let the boys down again. Hey, listen, tell us, we do have a little bit of uh, work going on in the background here. Can you tell us what damage, uh, for the very short amount of time that you're on the track, but you did give a really good hit, is this where the damage has come from, or can you explain what's going on here? Yeah, it was when I went out by the wall and I got taken out. It just All it did was just bend the shock, so it's not too bad. Just bolt another one on and off we go again. Uh, I noticed that Blake, oh, sorry, Blake Brooks sat that race out. That was a huge decision. Do you think he'll be in in the next one? Yeah, hopefully. I hope, I hope so. We need to put our A, a team together, you know. Like, don't get me wrong, we've got all good cars. But um, obviously the better cars we can get out there to try to accumulate some points and get the wins, you know. So, yeah, hopefully. Listen, I, I, absolute, I think you're a great guy. I can absolutely tell that you're devastated with what's happened. I'm going to let you uh, go gather your thoughts, ring who you need to, to ring, focus how you need to do it. But we do wish you luck in uh, the next race. I picked you guys to win, so you better pull your finger out. <laughs> we'll try our darn best to. Ah, uh, there you go. There's a smile. Good luck for the rest of the night. Cheers. Thank you. Awesome. Cheers. Listen, well, uh, we thought we'd come down and speak to some of these Auckland drivers, but they're actually nowhere to be found. Blake Brooks, I'm not sure where he is. Um, but we do have the cars on the track, so I'll cut back over to you guys and uh, see if I can go and catch up with some of these uh, some of these young guns. Thanks, Bianca. I'd really like to know what that, how much that fine was as well for that infringement. Give me one second. I'll ask him. I'm still down here. Bryce, really quickly, can you tell us how much that fine was? A uh, hundred dollar fine. Hundred dollars. There we go, Mike. All right. Thanks, Bianca. Three six one. Clinton Cheatham will be there as well for the Raiders. A lot less cars in front of the bell this time. And the three minute bell has just been started. Crews real quick to jump over that fence. Love the fact that they have got colour coordinated buckets. 
How's that? If you can see the uh, crew member on the left-hand side of Cheatham's car, uh, when he comes back, you'll see that he's got the three colours on the bucket. There it is right there, if, you can, if anyone can see that. There's probably going to be one really nervous driver here. Hadley Dixon, of course, has uh, driven in this Huntley team as well. So, uh, oh gosh, they're all coming. They're like screaming for a hammer. I don't know what that's for. But uh, he'll be quite uh, nervous right now. I can imagine sitting out there watching his, uh, the previous team that he used to race for, uh, wanting to uh, take him to the fence, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. Are you talking about the hammer? Everyone knows a motorsport. If you can't fix it, bash it. Yeah, it sounds like my computer and my laptop at home. <laughs> yeah. Two minutes to go. Looks like left front adjustments being made there for the 915 of Hadley Dixon. Hey, I've uh, got Brad Philpot down here. Brad Philpot, such a shame to not see you in the car, but talk us through some of the uh, the adjustments that you've made on the cars out here. Um, oh, young Hamish here, we just adjusted his belts and sorted out his GoPro. Uh, Clinton, he had adjustment on his shocks and uh, yeah, no, the boys are pretty much ready, just a slight tweak in the way we should go, so it's quite good to come up against the uh, Bulldogs. We've got a few guys in there that used to be part of Huntley, and uh, it's just a bit of a rivalry, yeah. Friendly rivalry, of course. I'm sure when uh, they all meet in the shed later on, they'll shake each, each other's hands and have a bit of a laugh together. Oh, yeah, 100%. A few beers will go around, and uh, we'll forget about it tonight and start again tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow, not tonight. I've seen some of these guys hold a grudge and do it, carry it on, especially you're one of them. No, I'm joking. You're the one of the nice guys. But listen, they're doing a great job. You're doing a great job. This has actually been a great meeting so far. Yeah, 100%. Uh, we just thought we'll give Hutch a run and he needs the experience this season so I'd stand out and uh, we'll go from there. But nah, jokes aside, we should be a good, uh, good crew of guys and uh, two teams can't beat it. All right, well, they're about to uh, close this gate. That looks like three minutes is up. Thanks for your words, but, uh, Brad. Yeah, just on 40 seconds to go. We love grudges in teams racing, though, Bianca, because drama is what we feed off up here in the box and as present presenters. And, you know, we like it when there's a bit of on-track rivalry. Just adds that bit, bit of extra spice. Oh, listen, we wouldn't be anywhere if we didn't have that track rivalry. You have track rivalries, you have personal rivalries. Uh, when it's out on the track, it's kept out on the track. But uh, it's nice to see, like I said, and, and Brad said, yeah, they all shake, shake their hands, have a beer afterwards, because nobody actually, you know, you can hold all the grudges you like but nobody actually wants to hurt somebody here no absolutely right 100% uh, so the Raiders will start from the inside on one with the Bulldogs going from two and first car up to the line will be the 31 of Chloe Ingram for the Bulldogs and they are really going to squeeze the Raiders down tight on this start No one else too keen just to make their way to that grid just yet. Ingram has it all to herself at the moment. And it looks like the 16H of James Marshall, who will go from grid position number one for the Raiders, yellow. Grid three for the Bulldogs. That will be filled by the six of Mortimer. Coming into grid position number four for the Raiders. The 32 of Jaden Dreading Manning. Grid five. Uh, grid six uh, already there. So grid five, the 27 for the Raiders of Brett Aiken. And That'll be the 55 of Zayden Slater. That will go from grid position 6. Six. 7 is the 26 of Bryce Carter. And the 7 of Hamish White will fill out the grid on number 8. Really squeezing the Raiders down close to the pole line on this start. Immediately the outside row explodes off the line. And it's the 31, Chloe Ingram for the Bulldogs out in front. Raiders giving chase in the big move down the inside at turn number three. 
Well, that could have been hard, but the 16 car rode up over the top. James Marshall, though, puts Ingram in the fence at turn two, three. Taking over the race lead. It's Bulldogs still leading. 55 of Zayden Slater. The 26 car, Bryce Carter for the Bulldogs, spins on turn four. Hits reverse. Lights it up on the grass and is back in this team's race. 55 Slater for the Bulldogs is your race leader from the 32. Jaden Dredding Manning in second place. Keeping on the back straight here. We've got a chain gang going on. And that was in behind the 16 of Marshall. Pretty impressive when you can block three other cars behind you. 55 race leader Zayden Slater slips by on the inside. Keeping on, turn one. Big move up there at turn number one. But Slater is up to the task. Clamped it on the pole, but gets spun. And the Raiders take the race lead. Nice work by the 32 of Dreading Manning. 27 in second place. I think Aiken, well, he might be a few laps down. Let's keep an eye on that second spot. It is the 31 of Chloe Ingram for the Bulldogs. There's a block up the top turn. Raiders pinning one of the Bulldogs to the fence. Seven and six. So Dredden Manning in the 32 has got a shotgun. Teammate running in behind. That's a 27 of Aiken. 26 car of Bryce Carter. Tries to take, well he does in fact, takes the seven car of Hamish White to the wall. It's still the 31. Ingram back in front for the Bulldogs. It's going back and forth this race. 27 car coming in hot. Aiken, whoa, he takes himself to the pole line. And the 31 hits one of his teammates. And Ingram is still the race leader. But that lead is shrinking rapidly now as the 32 car of Dredden Manning comes back into it. Keep an eye on this down at one. Oh. Oh. Well, that might be a contentious issue right there if you saw that. Oh, There's going to be something said about that, I'm sure, after this team's race. Already the arms are up in the air, and we go red. Someone's coming off. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a clear-cut case of attacking across the pole line. Going to have a look on a replay there. Look at that. Doesn't get any clearer than that. And all four wheels. It's good to see the uh, the Raiders fans down here still laughing. And look at that. That was uh, an interesting hit. They certainly weren't laughing where I was sitting here, <laughs> Mike. I think I might just well, actually, scurry I'm, along. No, you've just corrected that. Gladiators fans. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we're about to go green. Let's go racing once again. The cowbells sounding. Looks like the 31 of Ingram has gone as well, for perhaps seeking sentry on the infield. 55's been taken to the grass. Zayden Slater. White flag is out. We're on the final lap of an interesting team's race between the Raiders and the Bulldogs. As they come down the back straight, it's looking good for the 32 car. Jaden Dredding Manning is going to take the 100 points at least for the Raiders yellow. And it is still all action on the back straight. The 55's Slater. Slater, how many times has he gone round? Keep an eye on the seven of Hamish White back on the track. Trying to come in under the flag. The 26 car from the Bulldogs. Bryce Carter's going to try and pin him to the wall. Gets put in himself. Cross the stripe, two more cars. I think we could be, are we done? Just waiting for the seven car to come round, but that 26 car is still on the track trying to find reverse. Yes. 
16 has gone to the grass. Still green. Still got the 55 car at speed. And the caution's on now. 32. Jaden Dreading Manning for the Waikato Raiders unofficially with the win. 27 Raiders car, Brett Aiken second. 55 M's, Aiden Slater third. 16 Raiders driver, James Marshall will finish up fourth. And provisionally seven Raiders car, Hamish White for fifth. Looks like uh, one-sided victory going to the Raiders in that one, but we'll wait and see for that provisional result and the official result. But as it is at the moment, it looks like 170 to 25 for the Waikato Raiders yellow. So just a moment surmising that the 31M car of Ingram uh, was sent infield for seeking sanctuary over the pole line. Oh, it's definitely all happening tonight, but listen, I'm down here with Tim Parker. Tim, congratulations, that was a great win by Wellington. Yeah, thank you. No, it was pretty good to get a win under the belt, and um, yeah, focusing on this next one now, eh? Absolutely, and how good is it though, our old uh, 6WPG, Paul Gaskin, for those who don't know who PG is, it's, well, I'm surprised they wouldn't know. Amazing blocking in that race. He really, really stood up and said, listen, you, you, you're not going to win. You can't get past me. Yeah, no, nah, he did bloody awesome, eh? And, yeah, it's good he's stopping the lead cars. And then I ended up getting old Henderson, so I spun him up and then back to the lead. And, yeah, the boys are doing a good job. There was a lot of toing and froing, but I'm going to be really, really honest here, and it might be a very unpopular opinion, but I actually thought that Rotorua were going to come out a lot harder than the, what they actually did. Yeah, yeah. Well, everyone probably thought that, but, you know, it's racing and, yeah. Good on you, though, because they're the like, uh, like we keep getting reminded where they are the, oh, look, we've got a camera in our face now. They are the uh, national um, teams. I hear your mic, sorry, I, I did hear that. I just had a message in my ear. They are the national team champions at the minute, so it was going to take a lot to beat them, but you guys actually did it very convincingly. Yeah, yeah, well, you got to beat the best to be the best, so we've done that, so hopefully we go win this next one and then we yeah, Get all ready for tomorrow. Ben Ellis was a, another key performer in this team. He just ran and ran and ran, kept you safe, safe, snuggled in behind you, and you guys just kind of took off, and, and Rotorua almost just clearly left you to it. Yeah, yeah, so I only hit a car twice, and that was it, really, which just left me alone, and then I has been smart, so, yeah, it's, but yeah, it's good. Tell us, you said that you've got a focus for your next one. What is your main focus? Uh, you've got um, a lot of a, a lot of twos and pros here. You've got a few extra drivers and what have you. So I don't want to ask any of your game plan, but what's your main focus for the next race? Uh, sort of just the same as the last one. Just go and do what we got to do and, yeah. yeah. That's really it. Just that, uh, that wasn't a tough team's race in terms of uh, damage for the cars. Can you talk us through if any damage that these uh, that your teammates have? Uh, I don't actually know. I haven't really looked. I know, because do you know what? I've been chasing you around the pits. You're up there and you're back here. So, OK, well, that's fair, but it looks pretty relaxed down here. If there was uh, anyone that would be rushing around due to any damage, it would definitely be Alan Levine, and he's got a big smile on his face. He's actually taking a seat in the back of the truck. Yeah, yeah, he's... Pretty chilled out in that moment, but yeah, all well, the cars are semi, semi ready, so yeah. Look, we've got a lot of uh, racing to get through for the rest of the night. Like you say, you need to go and focus. I'm going to let you uh, go and do that. Good luck for the rest of the evening. Sweet as, thank you. All right, cheers. Thanks, Tim. It's action for the whole family. With 23 tracks around New Zealand, there's no better way to spend your weekends than at a Speedway New Zealand track. There's something for the whole family. Spree cars, saloons, stock cars, sidecars, midgets and much, much more. Pack up the family and make a trip to adrenaline-filled, action-packed bashes and crashes that only Speedway can deliver. Visit www.speedway.co.nz to find out the track nearest to you. Speedway, it's our summer thing. 
The St Nicholas is a familiar sight around Bluff as she steams out to capture Kandu Fishing's famous Bluff Kinner. Once caught, the Kinner is brought back to the purpose-built factory in Bluff where it is processed, packed and shipped fresh to you. But that's not all that Kandu Fishing can do for you. Try some of their green bone fish or delicious power products and you will soon see why seafood from the Bluff is world famous. So head to your local fish market or supermarket and ask for Kandu Fishing Kinner, Fish or Power. Kandu Fishing, there's nothing we can't do for you. Are you building a new commercial business or home? Or is it time that your existing premises had a repaint anywhere in the South Island? Then Anderton Decorators have you covered. From floor to ceiling, wall to roof, Anderton Decorators offer the latest techniques, equipment and technology to make even the hardest tasks seem simple. Anderton Decorators also has the expert team to take the frustration out of your next project. Call Shane today on 027 Painting. That's 027 724 6846. Anderton Decorators. We have you covered. Ruffies will take grid position one. They'll go from the inside with the Waikato Raiders in red on two. They'll want to do what the yellow team just did in that previous race. Try and take away the major share of those points. For the Raiders red, the eight is Larry Henderson. 13 of Jamie Simons. 67, Michael Rowe. 88, Justin Hutchby. 97, Casey Cheatham. And the 99 of William White with their team manager, Justin Hutchby. Thanks to 007 Paintball for the fire crew vehicle. Don't forget, take advantage of the food stalls around the track. Uh, you might want coffee as well. Caffeine and Chills doing a great job over there. Might just want a little bag of Dunkin' Donuts as well. Go and see the Little Orbits guys. And tomorrow, you're milling around in Hastings, you want something to do, you can go and check out the indoor market at the Hastings Sports Stadium in Railway Road. And that is where you'll find our Sweet Snacksidents crew. And we're going to give away one of their prize packs tomorrow night as well. They make really, really nice um, kind of ice biscuits and stuff, and some of them are even Speedway themed. And that's happening at the Railway Road Indoor Sports Stadium tomorrow, 9 till 2. Hey Mike, I'm not sure if you can uh, see what's happening at the minute down in the shed. We've actually got a couple of drivers on our screen at the minute. They're actually down here having their safety check like I uh, I keep talking about. Everybody probably wonders what happens. We've actually got them down here and they're asked things like what's the date. Um, they're asked to remember a letter, uh, what track they're at, why they're here racing. The questions may seem really, really simple. But that's a really, really good indication if they've got a knock to the head. Uh, every single driver after every race has to come down here immediately and actually do these checks. And if there's any concerns whatsoever, they're taken next door to the ambulance and the ambulance uh, the ambulance staff check them over. So it's great to see that these drivers are well cared for by the, these uh, Miani staff members here. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's called a cognitive test. Is that right? Yeah, I believe so. I couldn't actually get that out because I didn't know the proper name, but Mike, you sound like you're about right there. Well, I'll tell you what, it's a test that I could fail without a knock to the head anyway. Well, yeah, she asked what the date was and the poor driver said I don't know and I couldn't help him because, to be fair, I have no clue what the date is either. Well, it's easy for a Speedway person to forget that it's Friday night and not a Saturday. Absolutely, and it, it might sound, like I say, really trivial and basic questions, um, but it's a really, really good indication of uh, that they're actually aware of where they are, what they're here for and what they've been doing. Absolutely. Tell you what, this Raiders Red team looking pretty good out on the racetrack with their hot laps. Ruffy's just patiently waiting. So we've got the 99 of William White, the 8, Larry Henderson, and the 97 of Casey Cheatham. Now, when you have a look through the program, uh, it actually says that Casey Cheatham is a young lady, but I can assure you, he is not. <laughs> so just a little typo in that program. <laughs> Maybe that could be one of my commentator questions tomorrow night. Some great prizes to give away tomorrow. We've got some apparel as well. We'll squeeze all those into the meeting as well, uh, providing we get time, of course. It's going to be a busy night tomorrow. Really, really looking forward to the Tier 1 semi-finals and the Tier 2 ones as well to determine 5th through to 8th. And looking forward to giving away that Randy T front visor. 
would actually look really good in my man cave. That's if my wife let me have a man cave. No such luck. Hey, uh, Mike, you're, a, you're probably one of the most uh, knowledgeable pe pe people in Speedway that I know. I'm you don't know many people then, do you? <laughs> Stop it. Hey, uh, Mike, I'm really keen to know the Opera Orange Ruffies have already, uh, you know, had a race and they're out there just waiting uh, for this, this team to do their three-minute bell. If one of the Orange Ruffies' cars had an issue, could they come and join this three-minute bell? Or because they've already utilised it in their first round, do they just have to suck it up and stay on the infield? No, absolutely. I'm pretty sure that they can come and use that three-minute bell. Um, it is for both teams, just because they've had one. There's one every team's race. This is another team's race. Effectively, it's a new three-minute bell. Mm, interesting. Now I know. I feel much better. Well, Bill Clarkson will come and correct me if I'm wrong on that. <laughs> the Ruffies really need to pull out something special here. They've got 65 points from round one. Going to need at least, I think, 140. At least. It's hard to work out points uh, as to what that permutation will be. We'll know a little bit further on through this second round. Well, effectively, we're sort of really in halfway mode. So the Raiders red driving away from the three minute bell area. Ruffies from the inside on one. Raiders red will go from two. First car up to the line, the eight of Larry Henderson from grid position two. Looks like the 86 Bradley Singer will go from grid one for the Ruffies. The young boy who used to dream of racing in this meeting. If only we had a photo of him sitting on his beer crate inside that team's body that we could have put in the program. So waiting for the second row, looks like Ruffy's driver Daniel Melling is going to slot in there on grid position four. And assuming there, the 97 of Casey Cheatham for the Raiders. We'll go from three. We can already see the 13 of Simons for the Raiders on grid position six. And it's the 65 of Royden Heim that will go from grid five for the Ruffies with the 99 of William White, grid seven for the Raiders. And the final row slotting in there, the 27 of Isaac Fothergill for the Ruffies on grid position number eight. They're locked and loaded. First time on track for Raiders Red. Second time for the Ruffies. It's go time now for the Ruffies if they want to try and make that tier one semi-final. Oh, movement. Let's go racing. Raiders trying to go around the outside. That's the dangerous way to go with a Ruffies driver on the inside of you. And Singer takes the eight car of Henderson to the wall. Oh, we got one there. First roll over, up and over. I think that was the 24. It is the 24. Daniel Melling up and over and gone from the second team's race. By the 99, Raiders driver William White. Well, it was a slow rollover. There shouldn't be too much damage. Melling only, well, not even half a lap into the second team's race. So already the Maulers are car down. They did not need that. Hey, uh, so uh, I'm just going to interrupt for a minute, Mike. I'm having a bit of a laugh to myself because I've got someone down here looking extremely nervous to speak to me. Uh, Jason Gutteridge himself. Jace, you've never been to Miani before. Well, in terms of filming. Uh, how, how's it all going tonight? Can you explain to us, uh, are we in a good mood or are we in a bad mood? No, 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 good mood. Uh, no, the team have got it well and truly sorted out. We've just got a wee glitch with the graphics. Uh, seemingly doesn't talk very well to our system, so we're, we're not really in a position to get it fixed up right now, but we'll get it fixed up within the next... 
uh, you know, couple of hours or uh, you know tomorrow. Uh, so, but now nah, the stream's mint, so I can't complain. Good numbers. So uh, thanks to all those people that supported the club and bought the stream. The club are very happy with what uh, the numbers are tonight. And uh, obviously there's not much else happening around. Mind you, Shorten Street's getting pretty good at the moment. I should have been watching that. Oh, listen, I think we're going to have to console Jason. He's waiting on tender hooks to see if Shorten Street's going to be cancelled. He thinks it's safe, but golly me, I think it's time to go. But anyway, Jace, listen, how are you finding the uh, the racing? I know you're a true fan of teams racing. You can't beat it, right? No, it's, it's, it's really good, but unfortunately I've been busy trying to get everything 100% right. Once you, you've already alluded to, we've never been here before, so we needed to make sure everything's 100%. Like, everything's running through us, Mike, uh, everybody, that everybody's talking to everybody you can see it's really good for you know um, so yeah it's about communication and getting the, as much information as we can out there and talking to as many people as we can apart from me <laughs> well I was on a red light I was like god who am I going to speak to and there you appeared like an angel absolutely <laughs> all right now I'm gonna go bye Okay, listen, go away now, Jason. Thank you. Listen, uh, he doesn't know, but the amazing James Buckrell has actually left us very quietly two massive boxes of muffins. I've actually hidden them so the team don't know that I've got them. So, Jason, of course, he's uh, not allowed them, apparently. I think we can... Uh, we hi Michaela, uh, Michaela can't talk to anyone at home, but Michaela and I are going to hide them and uh, have a midnight feast. I think we really deserve it. Mike, I think you're doing a great job up there too. You might need to come and join us. Yeah, you, you've got all the fun stuff down there talking to everybody. Hey, I, you won't be able to hide those muffins though because Booker heard that. He knows. Oh, I'll fight Booker. I'll fight you, Booker. You're not having them. No, honestly, I will share them around. But uh, w uh, what I probably wanted to allude to was just the hospitality that we've had from the track so far. It's absolutely amazing. I mean, it feels like we're at home already. I think I'll claim 10. 10? I heard you were good for 20. <laughs> You're going to get half, Booker. <laughs> We'll see you can eat the quickest, Mike. We're going to ration them. We're ration them. Pitts TV eating contest. Let's do it. <laughs> uh, right, so we see the 24 car of Melling. 24 car of Melling goes to the infield. As I say, shouldn't be too much damage, but these drivers sitting here patiently, they want to get going. They will want to get back into this team's race. They're in the zone. And already, Mauler's going a car... Uh, sorry, the Ruffies going a car down, and they do not need that right now. Mike, I don't know if you can see me. I'm right under... Oh, no, I'll talk to you later. We're off. Here we go. 86, Bradley Singer. Uh, will he be your race leader? Oh, we're going back red. Have we got a car that didn't restart? 8H, Larry Henderson. Oh, he's gone. So, we're level pegging again. It is one car down for each team. Not sure what the issue here is for Henderson. Just did not move on that restart. Looked like it might have been stuck in gear then when the tow truck tried to push him off, not able to select neutral. One of the people I saw down on the track there just helping out, Drive Sharp. Drive Sharp, Alan saying, yeah. Thank you, Alan Levine. Alan, I think we need to give you a mic. Come up here, Alan. <laughs> no, he says no. <laughs> so Drive Shaft issue there for Henderson. Uh, I was just going to say that one of the other people I saw down on the infield Helping out and working with the tow truck crew is Craig Bowler, the North Island sidecar champion. So it just shows you how much people get involved in the sport. Yeah, they go and race their own class, but then they come and help out their club. Recovery vehicles hitting infield. Shouldn't be too far away from a restart. With just the six cars on the track. The greens are on. Royden Hine for the Ruffies, credited as the race leader on lap one. Hine has Bradley Singer run, running shotgun. And then the 27 of Fothergill should pick it up as well. Second place, Singer. Ruffies running one and two. Third place for the Raiders Red, 97, Casey Cheatham. Keeping on the 13 of Jamie Simons. Simons will look to turn right on Rahind, coming off turn number four. Hind slots up in behind. Round the outside goes Singer. Sparks are flying. Hind takes the 13 car of Simons to the infield. Still got the 27 car. Fothergill. Not up to race pace, but just trolling the pole line for the Ruffies. Looking to pick up the 97 car now of Casey Cheatham. Cheatham storming around the outside. 
drops back and gives the 27 a Fothergill a huge serve across the start finish. Pirouettes the 27 car. 86 Singer still the race leader. As Royden Hind attacks the 13 of Simon. Simons tries to put the bumper on to the 86 of Singer. Singer gets by on the outside. He's a lap ahead of the field in the 86 car for the Ruffies. They need more than this. They've only got the race leader in fourth place. They need the other two minor places as well to have any chance, I think, of a tier one semi. Still the 13 car of Simons pinning one of the Ruffies cars. I think it's the 65 of Hind. As Singer continues on with four laps to go. Royden Hind needs to get back into this team's race. They both redress the situation up there at turn one and two. Three laps to go for Singer. Still 97, Casey Cheatham in second place for Raiders Red. Singer turns down on one of the Raiders drivers. Don't know if that was the smartest move. And now the Raiders are going after the Ruffies. The 27 of Fothergill turned around again. Royden Hine chasing the 97 of Cheatham. Cheatham now I think will be your race leader. And it's changed about. Cheatham for Raiders Red has gone into the lead. Singer tries to get around the outside of the 99. They both go to the grass. We'll have to redress that situation. And Casey Cheatham will get the white flag. Raiders Red with one lap to go. Who is there to stop them? Only the 27 of Isaac Fothergill up there on turn number two. Fothergill on the brakes in the mirrors. Holding up the 97. Cheatham slips by on the inside. Fothergill spins again. Hard hit. Oh. Raiders Red take the win. And it's still going on. And it's a naked run to the line. Wow. 97H, Casey Cheatham turning defeat into victory. Takes the race for the Raiders Red. 86 Bradley Singer for the Ruffies picking up second place 99 for Raiders Red William White will finish third 27 Ruffies driver Isaac, Isaac Fothergill definitely in the wars and that one was fourth 65 Ruffies driver Royden Hind was fifth and the 13 Raiders Red driver Jamie Simons picking up sixth place And a provisional, provisional points total for Raiders Red, 125 to 70. So as I say, that is a provisional. So after every team has completed a race, apart from Raiders Red being a provisional result, we can confirm that Raiders Yellow are current round one leaders with 170 points. The Gisborne Gladiators on 155. Miani Maulers, third with 150. Wellington Young Guns currently sit fourth with 135. Wanganui Vulcans in fifth place with 130. Though the Orange Ruffies, if they did get 70, will be on 135. So that would actually, yeah, 135 after two rounds. So that is their total from their two qualifying teams races. Currently in seventh place, the Rascals with 60. Auckland Alley Cats sitting down there on eighth position with 45. Stratford Stormers have 40. And Bay Park, Bust, uh, Bay Park Bulldogs just 25 points. So some big teams with a lot to do in the second round. As we will move on to teams race number seven. And that'll be a matchup between the Wanganui Vulcans, currently on 130, and the Stratford Stormers on 40 points.
Hey, g'day. We're down here with one of the drivers on the Waikato team. That was a good win in that one, mate. Yeah, it's good to get a win under our belt, especially early on. So it kind of gives us a good run into the next one. The boys have got all confidence. Cars are oh, a bit mangled, but we'll get out there. You know, it's teams. We'll do it. That's part of the spirit of teams, isn't it, mate? You go out there, you bang it up, and you get it ready for the next race. Yeah, hell yeah. Everyone gets involved. So ah, we'll get out there. We'll hopefully uh, be a tough battle in the next one, but we'll try, we'll try. <laughs> Mate, you just keep going, 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 eh? It's never give up with this team. Yeah, it's definitely that, eh? you just got to keep going 100% all the time. Can't can't have a little bit of a mishap happen because that's when stuff goes bad. So, nah, it's good. I, I'm up there and uh, I, I can't stop hearing those bloody bells, mate. <laughs> nah, it's good. I, I, I can't hear them in the car, so they need to ring them louder, so. <laughs> <laughs> I think they all see me now after the other night. They all want me to all just see me and just ring a bell at me. Yeah, yeah, it's all part of the fight. Everyone gets in behind it, so yeah. I can't hear the cowbells, people. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> we'll hear them more. Oh, there we go. Look at that. That had to happen, didn't it, on the back there. Mate, um, um, the, the team really is gelling well. How was the trip down, though, today? Oh, the, the you kind of got a bit hot. <laughs> the brakes were a bit stucky, so nah, it's good. Uh, nah, everyone kind of enjoyed it. It was real wet, so we kind of got here and we're like, oh, right, it's kind of a miracle, man. It's bloody sunny. It's always sunny in Hawke's Bay, eh? Mate, this, what was I saying? What have I been saying, eh? It's always sunny in the Hawke's Bay. <laughs> I never doubted you. <laughs> it just, it, the New Zealand Supers was just an anomaly, mate. It didn't really happen. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hey, look, uh, I, I'm glad you guys are enjoying yourselves. You look like you're doing well. This team, the other Waikato team, just come in. They won their race as well, beating my poor Ruffies. But uh, the, both Waikato teams look like they're going to be up there. I hope. I hope. The Raiders uh, first, second, final, away. <laughs> okay, well, thanks, mate. I hope you enjoy the rest of your night, and uh, we'll go back up to Mike. Thanks. Thank you. Great Cheers. work, guys. Thanks, well, bro. just had a, had a really uh, cool thing come up. Uh, Regan O'Brien just come up and told me that the Gallup family have put up a thousand dollars for the best crash of the weekend. That's an absolutely stunning amount of money and big thank you to everyone involved with the Gallup family for that. Thousand dollars. I know we're going to see some big hits as this meeting progresses through tonight and tomorrow for our finals. Wanganui Vulcans on the track. This is team's race number seven. Vulcans will start on the outside. There's the first year fake outs. 26 of Kalen Mooney. Looked like he was going to head straight to the grid. Did a U-turn. Has slipped up in behind. Couldn't quite see the number of that Stormers car that just came to the line. 96. Carl Giddy will go from the inside for the Stormers. Looks like the 15 of Sturzacre goes from two. Then it's the three NZ for the Vulcans. Cody Lockett on three. The 32. Todd Duffy, he was in the wars in that first team race. He will go from four. Five, one, seven. Stormers driver, Mark Woods on five. One, six, four, Rahiri Connor. I think it is, that is on grid position number six, or it might, yeah, three, six, four on the side of that car. So Vulcans in round number one taking a huge amount of points, 130 from their first team's race. Stratford Stormers with work to do, just 40 points. Pitgate locked and loaded. Team's race number seven, Napier City Council. East Coast Peterberry Memorial Stock Car Teams. Let's go racing this time. Two cars on the brakes. Already got a driver turned around before the entry of turn one. And it's the 96 that's out in front. Carl Giddy for the Stormers. 
and he gets back on the brakes as they come down into turn number three, but the 15 of Sturzaker is going to take him to the fence. Sturzaker takes over the lead. 517 Mark Woods gives chase in second place. Then it's the 26 V of Kalen Mooney. Vulcans running one and three. Sparks flying up there at turn two. And Duffy again going into block mode in the 32 car. Cody Lockett tried to turn him around. Sturzaker gets in the mix as well. Car pinned to the wall on the back straight. That's one of the... It's a 364 car of Connor. And I think Wood as well. Race leader is the 15 of Sturzaker. Vulcans running one and two with the 26 of Caelan Mooney running shotgun. 96 for the Stormers. Carl Giddy there in third. Three drivers on the lead lap. The 26 of Mooney. Tried to squeeze. I think it was the 32 of Duffy to the grass. Duffy was able to avoid that and is now going to lie and wait for the 26 of Mooney who's going to drive back down on him and give him the push off turn four. And Duffy will get spun. Finally, the 517 back into this team's race. Mark Woods finally gets released. And the 364 of Rahedi Connor will sit low down on the pole line on turn four and wait. Here comes the 26 of Mooney. Sturzak is still the race leader. The 15 V car. Half race distance five, now four to go. Sturzaker just sitting in behind his teammate, the 3NZ of Cody Lockett. 364V of Connor further back, but has made up a position, moves up into sixth. 517 still sitting on the infield. Looks like his race is done for Mark Woods. That's one of the Stormers drivers out. Three to go. Not much action in the second half of this team's race. Everyone trying to preserve these points. Keep an eye on the 364 uh, three, of Connor. It goes into block mode on the 96 of Carl Giddy. Stormers driver still in second place in the 96 car. As Duffy once again gets taken to the wall by the 3NZ. Lockett pins him in. White flag, one to go. The Vulcans are looking strong. On the break down the back straight. Round the outside goes the 26 of Mooney. And Connor has done great work on the break and will take the 96 car of Giddy to the wall. Checkered flag falls. Sturzak is going to pick up the win for the Vulcans. Well, possibly the quietest team's race we've had all evening. And it looks like a 1-2 for the Vulcans with the 26 of Kalen Mooney coming in a lap down in second place. 96 Stormers car, Cal Giddy for third. 3NZV, Cody Lockett fourth. 32S, Todd Duffy fifth. And 364V, Rahiri Connor will pick up the sixth place with a provisional points total. 160 to 35. Wow, if that's 160 for the Vulcans, that's going to put them on a massive 290 points and most certainly has to be a tier one semi final. Well, there's a lot of blocking and slower racing going on in that team's race. Certainly wasn't the hard hits, big hits put in. And the Vulcans will not be disappointed about that. That will lessen the work that they will need to do before tomorrow. It just seemed like the Stormers just couldn't quite get into that. Good 
work there by Duffy, just having a look at the replays on the screen, thanks to Pitts TV. And Duffy really has been uh, in the mix, putting his car everywhere it needed to be. But just the uh, team coming up shy, and they may even be struggling to make the Tier 2 semi-finals. Deserved round of applause there for the chequered flag. Hey Mike, I'm down here with a, a couple of your lovely track volunteers actually. Hey, can you tell us what your name is? Lisa. Lisa, I was in the shed before and you're, you're the person I was talking about on the live stream who's asking all the questions. If there is a concern with one of the drivers and he may seem a little bit uh, unsure of the answer or not sure what's going on, what's the next step from there? Is it, are, are you the one who instructs him, instructs him where to go? I would send them up to the St John people to get checked out again and make sure they were fine. So what kind of uh, checks do St John's do as opposed to what you're doing? Um, they'll just do, do a prior thorough check and, and things like that, make sure there's no more injuries and, and stuff, so yeah. So it's your job to ask some of the basic questions and then I guess they uh, look in their eyes and take their heart rate and things like that? Yeah, you check that their eyes are, um, are good and that they've still got their humour and things like that and they haven't changed them before racing and stuff. Yeah, yeah, and that's really good check. So hey, uh, Lisa, it's lovely to meet you. I, I would love to have a cameraman here, but we haven't. But listen, you are on the screen before. You're doing a great job. Thank you. No worries. Booker, who are you down there with? Oh, I'm here with young Bradley, mate. You've had a real great intro into teams racing. You led a couple of races that first one. Unlucky, mate, but that just comes down to experience. How much are you loving your experience here tonight? Yeah, I'm um, pretty speechless, to be honest. It's a um, whole different world of racing. You know, going out there knowing you're going to get smashed, knowing you've got one job to do, and, you know, there's always a second one there if you need to do it. Um, but, yeah, it's unreal. It's cool. Mate, I think you've done exceptionally well. Like I said to the other night, as long as you give yourself 110%, there's nothing more you can do. But what you've done tonight shows that you have got real potential to be a teams racer, mate. Yeah, I think I, I think I gave it all I got for, you know, my first time teams racing. i definitely got lots to learn still. But, yeah, from tonight, I feel pretty comfortable to do it again, definitely. Oh, yeah, so Mike's in my ear. He's just saying to ask you about uh, years and years ago, you had a... Uh, uh, a Orange Ruffy's teens body used to sit in that pretend to drive, mate. Yeah, I knew that was going to come up. Yeah, I think oh, I think it was Peter Berry's uh, one of his last bodies he had in the team, and uh, somehow we ended up with it. And yeah, I used to pretend I was a stock car driver in the backyard, and yeah, it's pretty cool to have it on my car now and be doing what he was doing. So yeah, it must make it more special now being on your opening teams racing to be an Orange Ruffy, mate, with that history. Oh, for sure. It's definitely something cool to look back on and, you know, I'll be able to look back on it in many, many years to come as well. Look, mate, you've done a fantastic job out there. Congratulations on what you've achieved tonight. Um, you guys haven't quite got to the finish line, but you've still got plenty of racing to go tomorrow. Um, I hope you enjoy tomorrow night, mate, and well done. Yeah, thank you. Being so close, just, yeah, that last corner, <laughs> twice. That's all it takes, mate. Hey, back up to you, Mike. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Thanks, Booker. Well, seeing a little bit of the wet stuff out there, looking through the back window in the comm box. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately we've got a bit of the wet stuff, but we've also got Keelan Mooney who came in on the tow truck. Uh, I thought that you were cruising in that race and I thought, oh, it's just cruising, but obviously it was a bit more. Yeah, a bit of gearbox problems, uh, run out of gears, so. <laughs> oh no, hey, um, everyone's jumped in here really quickly, do you think it's going to be fixed for tomorrow? Yeah, definitely, we'll um, get the change over this afternoon, I mean, in a couple of minutes and we're good to go again. I love this. You guys can do this in a couple of minutes. I drive an Audi. I take mine down to the uh, down to the service station, and, and I don't see it for another three months. It's crazy. You guys can do it overnight. Yeah, no, we got uh, we get pretty good at it. We've done a few nowadays, so um, yeah, we just the yeah, team will get stuck in and get it sorted for me, and I just hop back and drive. Awesome. Good luck, hey, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Well done on two race wins as well. Awesome. Thank you. Cheers. Well, I can tell you this next team's race event number eight on your program, the Gisborne Gladiators. Versus the Miani Maulers. Long time of history between these two teams. Gladiators picking up 155 points from round one. Maulers 150. Not much in it on that point sheet. And a big win for one of these teams will most certainly be a tier one semi-final. And even quite possibly 
both teams could make it through to the top four conceivably if one team was to get the 100 points another one the 95 it is possible this is going to be an intense matchup gladiators will go from the grid position one we already see the 71 car of ethan bruce already parked up now a little bit of moisture has fallen on this track It'll make it a little bit more interesting. 75 for the Maulers. Newport's Auto Electrical on the back of that race car. That's Leroy O'Reilly. Provides plenty of entertainment regularly on race nights, the 75 car. Catch fence is still open. Three minute bell for the 75. Hey, while we're waiting for some of these cars to uh, come onto the track and wait for this three minute bell, I actually want to give a big, big sh birthday shout out to Ra. Would you believe he's 37 years old and still teams racing? Oh gosh, I don't know how these some of these drivers put their body through it, but we're wishing Ra a very, very happy birthday. Awesome, yeah, we love doing the birthday shout-outs. Thankfully mine wasn't today. Slipped it by yesterday, that worked out perfectly. <laughs> well, the rain just keeps on falling. It is just a drizzle. It was actually scheduled for around 6 o'clock, so we're about an hour and a quarter later than that. Uh, it isn't supposed to be for too long and as long as we don't get heavy rain then uh, we could be good to go for those last three teams races that's all we've got left tonight this is the one I'm really looking forward to the gladiators versus the maulers I do like Humble's 46 car in those colours tow truck doing a bit of a skid there on turn three as they still work on the 75 of O'Reilly. I'm not sure how much time is left. So O'Reilly making his way to the grid. No, goes infield. So these sort of conditions change the game plan a little bit for teams racing. It's going to make it a little bit of a wider race line. In fact, looking out the window there, that drizzle does look like it's falling a little bit heavier. It'll be interesting to see what the call is. gate is being open so this race is being delayed we will have a rain delay for this meeting uh, please go and find somewhere dry that you can hang out for a little while and we'll wait and see if this rain shower just moves on by it is scheduled to do that and then they'll do a little bit of track remedial work this is why we start at 7 at 4 30 this late in the season it's only 18 minutes past seven we've got plenty of time to get these last three teams races through. Tomorrow and Sunday's weather looking great. Well, it is definitely falling heavier. So we'll put a little bit of music on and we'll maybe go and tee up some interviews for you a little bit after that as well. Sit tight. Oh, thank you for your patience for everyone who's waiting at home. We're waiting here nervously. I'm actually down here with Dion Henderson. Dion, you reckon that the night was over, but it might be looking a bit promising now. Yeah, yeah, we might get away with it now. Weather's starting to come right. We'll see. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Surprisingly, it can be cold, uh, like raining here in the Hawke's Bay, but it's not actually cold. We're actually still quite warm down here, but we are waiting patiently to see what is going to happen. Have you had a chance to look at the track yet? No, 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 not yet. We're going to have a walk up in a minute. The boys have just come back from having a look, so I'd say it's pretty wet, but they've got the track guys out there going through that now, so we'll see if they can get that sorted for us, and then we'll go from there.
Yeah, hopefully we can uh, get these last four races of the evening done and then it doesn't mess up all the plans and what have you for tomorrow. Because, of course, famous, uh, you know, when your team's racing, there's a famous whoopsie, oh, no, we're all looking skyward and we all know what that means. Dion, tell us what's happening. Uh, it's starting to spit on us again now, so hopefully this is just going to pass through and we don't have to deal with it. But we'll see. If, if we've got a race tomorrow and we've got to do three in a day, we'll do three in a day. I'm not, not too stressed about it. We've done it before. We're actually quite lucky to get as much as done as what we uh, as what we have done because it was meant to rain earlier on in the evening. So we've come so far, so good. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, we came down here this week expecting to not even race tonight. Really, I thought it was going to be a Saturday Sunday meeting. I've reorganised work off for Saturday Sunday. So I mean, it'd be nice if we could get this in and then I can go back to my normal schedule. Yeah, Dion, talk, talk us through your night so far. Unfortunately, you didn't come away with the win in your first race. Your uh, next one, of course, is up against the Alley Cats. But talk us through the morale down in the team. Yeah, yeah we're, all, we're in pretty good spirit still. Just disappointed, obviously. Um, expect a little bit more of ourselves. Just, yeah, come up a little bit short against Wellington. I mean, we were close, and it was, it was right there, but just a couple of little things at the end and just not quite going our way. So you take it for what it is. It was still close, and that's the main thing. We put up a good fight. Yeah, absolutely. It was, uh, and they're a hard team to beat as Wellington. When they're on fire, they're on fire, eh? And, and unfortunately, that uh, young young gun, Tim Parker, 21W, he was just clever enough to run away with that win. Yeah, yeah, he did. He got away early and just kind of got himself in a good spot and got got himself, yeah, and got himself a win, which is good. And it was good for them. I mean, they're quality side. You back to back 3 MZ, they're, they're good. We knew that, so you can't take them lightly. And we, we tried <laughs> everything we had to, to, to get it, but you come up short, eh? Tell us, Dion, are you taking the same kind of mentality into uh, the race against Auckland because they're two totally different teams? Can you race the same race or is it a totally different outlook now? Uh, it's a different outlook now. Um, we've kind of worked the points over and we, well, I th we think we can still make top four if some stuff goes our way. So we'll go down swing and we're going to need a big score here so we're going to have to really give it hell. But if we get one, we get one. If we don't, we don't. Just want to get a win more than anything, to be fair. What was the team talk when you came in after that? I know that Tony um, is a very calm, calm manager for you guys as well. So he would have been like, come on guys, chin up. But I, I don't want you to uh, tell us what you actually discussed because of course that's, uh, that's not privy for us. But what was the actual discussions in teams in terms of, hey, you did great, you did great. I mean, you can't take anything away from you. Nah, nah, everyone was all in pretty good spirits about the whole lot. Um, everyone did their job. Wellington just did theirs a little bit better and it, it, one of those things, how it happens and... Yeah, everyone's in good spirits, just a little bit frustrated. Yeah. And it's just those little things too, just those tiny, I wouldn't even want to call them mistakes, but those little um, events, I suppose you could say, that happen on the track that can just change in an instant and then you could be winning and then bang, you're upside down. Yeah, I mean, we were 1-2 for five laps there and it just come unstuck at the end there. And old Ethan Levine got me with three or four to go and Tim flicked me and, and that was that and just couldn't get myself back in the lead. I think we were still leading with two to go, so just bummer really, but that is what it is. Hey, we always like speaking to you, Dion. You're one of the true characters of the sport. You came out of the gates, uh, first man on top of the car. We absolutely love that about you. Yeah, yeah it's good. You've got to put a bit of a show on for the crowd and try and be Mr. Entertainment, and I enjoy the parades. They're a lot of fun, and you got to get on the roof and wind everyone up and then get myself all barred up for it. So that's uh, good. We're enjoying it. Well, that's part of it, isn't it? You have to get yourself kind of geared up and in that, uh, in that mindset as well. Yeah. Tell us, it's coming very, very closely to the end of the year and the end of the uh, racing season for a lot of your drivers. What does the next couple of weeks look like for you? Um, no, nah, straight in the shed after this. I'm done. I've had enough. We've done 35 meetings this year. I have absolutely had a guts full, to be quite honest. <laughs> it's been 24-7, so no, nah, I'll be happy to see the end of it. Listen, we're going to all run for cover now. This is getting a little bit heavier. We love speaking to you. We love your insights. We wish you a very happy off-season, by the way. I think you absolutely deserve it. Hey, good day, everyone. Hey, it's unfortunate the rain has won here at Miani Speedway for our Peterberry Teams event. Um, it will be run tomorrow, the rest of that, starting at 4pm, earlier start, 4pm tomorrow. Unfortunately... Um, it, the weather has beaten us. Uh, we had some spectacular racing tonight. Um, we hope you enjoyed the coverage here at the Pits Media, Pits TV. Um, it's been a fantastic night. Um, oh, here we go. Here's Bianca <laughs> just getting here in time to join me. What a night it's been, mate. Yeah, it sure has. Golly me, I, I, heard, uh, I heard the call. I was right down the other end of the pits in the fan zone having photos taken, would you believe? So I had to, to rush it back. But uh, we do thank uh, everybody for sticking with us, yeah? Hang on, there's a message coming in for Jason. Bear with us, guys.
Okay. Okay, no, okay. so did you get sense of yep, that, Bocco? I get that. So what he's saying is for the last four races that we have tonight, we'll be carrying over from the string tonight, tomorrow. So you should just be able to log in as per, in case, say you logged out tonight and logged back in again, that's how you'll get your stream tomorrow. And then it'll be a new stream you'll have to purchase for the second part of the racing. So same, same. Yeah. Same, same. Yep. 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 Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. So yeah. So you don't have to pay to see the rest of the four races that you would have seen tonight. But once that's done, you will have to pay for the next part as it. And let's face it, it's well worth doing. This racing's and is spectacular. And the guys tonight were pumped and just an amazing, amazing event so far, Bianca. Yeah, absolutely. We did know the rain was coming. It was expected a little bit earlier, so we thought that we were going to be good to go. And then all of a sudden, literally out of nowhere, it just started. It wasn't heavy rain. It wasn't a lot of rain, but it was just enough to make it unsafe. And yeah. like we keep saying time and time again, the driver's safety is absolute priority here, and there's no way that anybody is going to send um, the drivers out on a, on a wet track. <laughs> 100% and what people have got to realise it's not just the wet track it's the wet infield Yes. and if a car gets spun to that infield it's got no way to stop can go straight off and into the wall and that's where the driver's safety has to come into it so um, just stick with us and tomorrow you're going to see some fantastic racing again yeah the, these guys will go and fix their cars and do what they need to do they have debriefs um, they'll try and get new uh, new plans and attacks and what have you and it'll be just racing as normal it, is, it has been fantastic racing so far a couple of surprises especially with that Rotorua team, it oh. uh, didn't seem like they were flying on all cylinders at all. Um, so they, I think, will have a really good debrief uh, this afternoon, or sorry, this evening back yeah. at the hotel. Oh, 100%. There was a few surprises thrown in there for us. Mm. We almost mm. saw the Ruffies take out the first mm. one. So close. Unlucky <laughs> for them. But some of the teams we thought were going to really be on top yeah. weren't. Yeah. So let's look forward to tomorrow night because I bet it's going to be bigger and better. Yeah, let's hope so. But listen, we thank everybody who has uh, streamed in so far. We do appreciate it. I want to say uh, thanks to Kevin. Karen and Paige, especially, who have given us lots of messages, uh, private messages, to let us know that the stream is great. We're going to cut it off for now. We're going to see you guys tomorrow. And this we can absolutely guarantee the weather is different. The sun is going to be shining. 100%. Sunny Hawks Bay tomorrow, people. Thanks for joining <laughs> us, and we'll see you tomorrow. Cheers.